to make a motion? Motion to close executive session. I make a move that we close executive session. Hold on. Second. <clears throat> Any discussion? All in favor of closing. When I, when, I, when I hit the gavel, that means everybody, please be quiet. Thank you. Um, the meeting's starting. Um, any discussion? No, discussion. On, no, okay. All in favor of closing the executive session, signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Is there a motion for adjournment? I move that session? we uh, adjourn the work session. Taking it. Any discussion? All in favor of adjourning the work session, signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. Thank you. <laughs> Call the regular city council meeting of the Brookhaven City Council to order. Um, is there an invocation? Who do we have for invocation? Oh, I've got it, Mayor. Okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have to ask me. Come on. Come on. Come on. Dear Lord, may we always hear your gavel when you hit that gavel, and may we always be attentive to you. And Lord, may the decisions be those that you would want us to make, and may our hearts be there where you want them to be. Be with our council, be with this city, as we deliberate here tonight your business. We pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 All right. <coughs> uh, call to order. Here Mayor order. J. Max Davis. Here. Council Member Joe Gebbia, District 4. Here. Council Member Bates Madison, District 3. Here. Council Member, Member John Park, District 2. Here. Council Member Rebecca Chase Williams, District 1. Here. All present. Okay. <coughs> Please stand for the pledge. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Mr. Mayor, before you get started, mm -hmm. uh, there are some adjustments to the agenda mm -hmm. that need to be made, uh, if you would allow it. Under the consent agenda, we need to add a new item number five, which is for the council to approve the 3% uh, 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 raises uh, that was included in the budget that was approved uh, in December. Uh, the second uh, change is to move item number one under old business ordinance 2014-11-19, move it under new business and make it uh, part of item number two as they are related. Okay. Also basis. Yes, and thank you. And under reports and presentations, item number two, if you could please delete that from the agenda. Okay. All right, quickly, I um, just want to make a quick announcement about um, Park of Brookhaven. It's, it's, uh, Parks and Recreation Coalition, formed by citizens of Brookhaven, are having some visioning work sessions uh, for Asher Park, Georgian Hills, and Skyland Park. They'll be tomorrow at 7 o'clock at Asher Park Community Center, Thursday one uh, at 7 o'clock at the uh, city. Hmm? I'm sorry, next week, next Wednesday. Yes, not this Wednesday. Next Wednesday, the 21st, Thursday, the 22nd, and uh, at Georgian Hills. Skyland Park is Monday, the 26th with also follow-up dates for Asher Park at one twenty uh, for 129, <coughs> and, uh, I guess it's a Saturday morning at 10 o'clock, or Thursday morning at 10 o'clock. Monday, the 2nd of February from, at 10 o'clock at Jordan Hills, and Thursday, the 5th of February at Skyland Park. This, is, uh, this type of meeting will, will give the city great feedback on what you actually want to see in your parks and what kind of pr improvements you'd like. So um, you can talk to uh, either Sue Binkert or Terrell Carsons. There, if you raise your hands, please. We should have had the public. And you can get one of these, maybe? Or is there any, did you make any extra ones? Your fault. It's on, the, it's on the, <laughs> the city website? Okay. It's on the city website as well, brookhavenga.gov. These are very We're important, so please attend and give your uh, vision and input. And we'd like to uh, see what the results of those are. So thank you. And thank you, too, for pointing that out. All right. And thank you. John Park, I think, is going to be at, these are all in District 2, correct? Yes. And I'm going to try to come to some as well. So. We'll have more of these for other parks in the city as well. All right. Next is public hearings. Item number one, Ben. Mayor's yes. House. 
Go ahead. All right. Um, item number one is the RZ 14-16 Rock Haven Homes. <coughs> uh, Mr. Song will be presenting this. Yes, Council, I'll request that RZ 1416 and RZ 1417 be heard together, uh, being that it's related. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, the applicants were here before you uh, in November, and initially they showed uh, an attached product uh, that had upwards of 36 units in total for Tract A and B. Uh, they did submit a revised site plan on January 6th. It's not very clear as to exactly if it's uh, still an attached product or a detached product based upon the site plan that's been received. We did not receive uh, a, a revised letter of intent. Uh, but one thing that we would note is there is a decrease in the total number of units uh, that's been proposed, uh, which is now down to 29. Uh, from further review, it appears that further discussion may be required between staff and the applicant. Um, it, as there may that be was some a typo on the agenda? That says they're 24? Possibly, but yes, 29 is correct. Yeah. 29 is correct. Um, and with that said, there's still deficiencies that has to be worked out. Um, so staff would recommend that this be deferred or remanded back to the Planning Commission uh, for date certain March 4th uh, with the council date certain of March 24th. Thank you. Um, open the public hearing. <clears throat> we still need to have a public hearing, right? Yes, yes. Go ahead. We'll open the public hearing. Mr. Yeah. Dillard, the applicant. Mayor, not Mr. Shrub. <laughs> Kathy, Kathy. Um, we have met with the neighborhood on several occasions, and as a result, uh, they ask us to come back with a detached product, which this site plan recommends. I'm going to tell you right now, we've met with Oak Forest neighborhood, and they're not in support. And Mr. Coles and them are here tonight. I'm sure we'll speak to that. We're hopeful that we can uh, persuade them to a reasonable position and, and uh, support this application. We are also in the process of meeting with other neighborhoods in the area to, uh, uh, to go over this new plan. And as Ben said, We've really not had an opportunity to meet with staff to go over whatever objections they might have because we sort of did this unilaterally within a confines of our own understanding and sometimes that's not sufficient. Although we're always right. No, I mean, I'm just kidding. Uh, but having said that, we would, uh, we would ask that it go to March and um, um, it's my understanding of the rules when you amend like this, although I couldn't find it in the ordinance that when you make this kind of significant change in the site plan, we went from a detached, an attached product that had over 35 homes to a detached product that's got under 30 homes. It's a fairly significant change. So we think it would be appropriate to give us an opportunity to meet with staff, continue to meet with the neighborhood. Hopefully we can reach some accord uh, by March. But it would go back to the March Planning Commission then come back to you for your second meeting in March. And if there are any questions or if I need rebuttal, I'd like to reserve my remaining time. Thank right, you. Thank you. Next. Opposition, Kristen Hall. Could you give us just a second with the clock, Mayor? Technical difficulties. <clears throat> Two minutes. <coughs> Cut my time down. Use your iPhone. I can count and read. Okay. <laughs> Uh, might need a new clock. Just give me a little handheld stopwatch. All right, go ahead. I feel like I'm on jeopardy now. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Mayor and City Council members. My name is Kristen Hall. I live at 4208 Oak Forest Drive. I purchased that home almost two years ago to this day. I wanted to live in Oak Forest Hills for two reasons. One is to be close to family, identical twin that we often get confused. I was noticing that. Noticing that, <laughs> yes, yes. We're all around the town. The other is because I wanted my daughter to live in a neighborhood that was much like mine growing up. I wanted her to be able to ride her bike. I wanted a neighborhood where the streets were filled with buzzing sounds and sugar highs on Halloween. I wanted a neighborhood where the homes rivaled that of Clark Griswold at Christmas. And more importantly, I wanted a neighborhood where backyards and front yards exist. The truth be told, it's hard to find those in our neighborhoods these days. When I purchased the house, I had some updating done. It's a small ranch. 
I did some work on the inside. I also enclosed the garage and created a mudroom. In order to do that, I went through all the required steps, permitting, multiple, inspections, et cetera, in order to make my home what I wanted it to be. When the freak storm hit in June of 2013, a tree crushed the right side of my home. I went back through that same process, permits, et cetera, to make sure that my daughter's room was rebuilt and my roof was re-put re back. Our neighbor Nelson also suffered a tree damage at that point. It nearly crushed his home. And he decided, being a longtime resident, that he was going to rebuild rather than from scratch rather than uh, reframe the structure. For him to do that, he's been through too many to count hearings, proposals, redrafts, et cetera. So much so that it's 18 months later and he still lives in an apartment waiting for his home to be finished. The major difference in his home that he wanted was to build up and also to add a front porch. That front porch posed a problem because in order to make sure that a front porch goes into place, the setback needs to be approved by your neighbors. So a five foot front porch, it created an enormous amount of time for him to get the approval. It seems to me that given that and given all the hoops that multiple neighbors have jumped through for certain things that we want to do to our properties, that we're even considering, looking at, or we're even proposed a site plan that could consist of a five foot setback on the entire south entrance to our neighborhood on Oak Forest Drive. I don't know what you can possibly put within five feet. The bottom line is there's only two parties that stand to uh, benefit from this proposal and from the development. The developer, who in order to protect their own profit margin and pockets has no option but to cram as many buildings into that space as possible. And the second is the property owners. They're asking a completely absurd amount for their properties. They're holding all of us, quite frankly, my neighborhood, you as the city council, the gateway to Brookhaven, and the developer at hostage, all for their financial gain. While 100 plus residents, many that stand behind me today, stand only to lose with this development. I respectfully ask that you decline any rezoning request, any request to redire redirect back to the Planning Commission, and any other stall ta tactics that may come to light as this has gone on too long. And quite frankly, we want to get back to living in and enjoying our neighborhood as it is today. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next. Alan Mick. Good evening. Uh, my name is Alan Mick. I live at 4110 Oak Forest Drive next to the north parcel of the rezoning area, petitioned rezoning area. Um, I've written several long emails. I don't want to repeat all that, so I just wanted to make it a little more concise and make a few of the main points. First, I'm pretty disappointed with the new proposals that came back, which basically takes some townhouses, divides them by three to five feet. Uh, we still have the situation where we have the sides of these high, tall, thin units uh, facing the streets, facing the side yards, the rears of the building facing other side yards, the side of my house. And the same thing as what Kristen was saying. When I built my house, um, there was a, even a discussion at the end whether it was 45.5 feet or 40. I was behind the 40 feet and I went through all types of discussions and just to keep my house where it was. I mean, we've all done that with the zoning that was there in place at that time. As I said, mostly it's the orientation of the streets and the rest of the homes with these improper setbacks, the rear decks, the sides facing streets and side yards, and also in my case, a road that's actually dead ending in my side yard by the side of my house and for the um, access to these buildings. I realize this is a business. I personally love construction. I've built my own house seven years ago. I built about 12 over, um, over the past years. And it's, it's a project. It's a, it's, it's a business for Rock Haven. These guys are going to come in, spend 12, 18, I don't know how many months to build it, develop it, and then they're off to the next venture. And then we sit with it for decades. I mean, this, this type of development. Um, so that's basically a quick summary, and I would like to again ask the City Council to uh, deny this petition for rezoning. Thank you. Thank you. Clay Robertson. I'm Clay Robertson. I live at 4269 Ashwoody Trail. I've submitted a written materials, and I'm actually, uh, I want to congratulate the city. Before I came here today, I, my, my family was sick last time. I couldn't make it, but this afternoon I watched the whole meeting online. I want to congratulate the city for their transparency. So I'm, I'm confident you've read all our written materials this time. Um, but I, I, I want to comment on a couple things that Mr. Dillard said about this being a significant change. This is a very insignificant change. 
They've, they've put a little window of air in between the units, but they've gone from 32 to 29 units. These are, it's essentially the same plan. Even their own revised site plan that we've been provided with still calls them townhomes. Um, so if they're, these are, these are single-family homes in name only. Um, these are not part of the neighborhood. I, I, I watched the comments that yourself, uh, Mayor, you, you made about this needs, to be a, this needs to be part of the neighborhood. The site plan is still not part of the neighborhood. It's an inward-facing, it's its own self-contained neighborhood. Um, the, the density that they're proposing is 5.6 and 6.44. The density in Oak Forest Hills is 1.45. All the Murphy Candler Lakes District is Nancy Creek is 1.79, Ashford Forest 2.22, Kennerbury Hills 1.55. They're asking for four and a half times the density of the neighborhood that they're going to be within. That's just not reasonable. Uh, that's and it'll it'll result in nearly a 30 percent increase in the in the number of homes in our neighborhood. In reality, this is not even a scaled down pro, um, scaled down project. Everybody left the last meeting understanding that this project would be scaled down. It's gone from 39, 32 townhomes that they were estimating at a price point of four hundred thousand dollars. Now it's twenty nine single single family homes at five hundred thousand dollars. So it's gone from a twelve point eight million dollar job to a fourteen point five million dollar job. So incredibly, they've actually increased the scope of the plan. And I've, I've tried to understand why we just have such a disconnect from what our, our neighborhood envisions and what the developer envisions. I went to the meeting that we had with the developer and Mr. Dillard, and, and I don't bear them any animosity. You know, I happen to like the developer. I, I think they're good guys. They're trying to make a living. They just don't see things the way we do, and, and we live in the neighborhood. But the question was asked of me at that meeting, Clay, why do you even care? You live at the back of the neighborhood. And, and that stuck with me for a couple days because I just thought that question was so naive. But I, I, I had to think about it, and I thought, you know, these guys don't build homes. They build houses. But people build homes. People, they certainly don't build neighborhoods. People like Kristen Hall, who just got up here, she builds a neighborhood. And we're proud of our neighborhood, and we think the city of Brookhaven is proud of our neighborhood. All the neighborhoods in the Lakes District, if you look at the city's comprehensive plan, which I know you all have, it's all about preserving the single-family neighborhoods. 29, if you want to call them single-family homes, jammed into a small acreage like this does not preserve the single-family neighborhoods. In my opinion, Murphy, Murphy Candler, the lake, the ball fields, that's all driven by these single-family neighborhoods. Mayor, I've seen you there playing ball with my, your kids play ball with my kids. I think that these neighborhoods is what drives what's great about our area and what's great about our community. And we, we trust that you'll, uh, you'll follow the comprehensive plan and you'll deny any further deferral of this request. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Alan Cole. I just have to make a comment. Uh, when are you not going to come to anything without a Florida Gator shirt on? I, well, actually, I, I'm passing actually, orders against you. You don't know. I went to the meeting that Clay and I went with Doug, and they act, and I didn't wear a Gator shirt. Oh. And I was commented like, "Who are you?" <laughs> so tonight, I thought I have to wear it because making me mad. I did. That's it. That's good though. Uh, I thought, well, I'm upsetting only one up here. I think. I think I'm right with that. I think everybody else has another alliance. Oh, he went to Pansy School. Anyway. But, but I'm Alan Cole, 4219 Ashwood Trail. And yes, I, and, and in Montgomery School, they, all the kids call me Gator anyway, so I gave up. So that, that works for me. And, uh, but what I'd like to comment is, is for 30 years here, I've heard that, that the myth is that R100 zoning doesn't work at our entrance. But the fact is, for 30 years, it's worked great. The home that was destroyed by trees, they, they built a new home. They didn't even hesitate. They built a new home. We thought they'd level a lot and kind of complain they couldn't build. They didn't. They built it. They rented it. We've had three homes since the last meeting that sold for over 700000 on the north side of, of uh, West Nancy Creek coming up. You all said people are saying they don't want the homes. Well, they were sold. And people and they, they face Ashford Dunwoody. You can build 12 homes on, these, on this land and not come to this commission. It fits R100. Only four of those homes would necessarily have access to Ashford Dunwoody. All the rest would have access to our street. And, and if it was sold in a conglomerate, they would all be on our street. So, so the myth is, 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 it's just a myth. It's not there. R100 works. We're happy with it. The uh, landowners aren't. 
for 30 years, and this is for you for 30 years, they have never, ever had an individual home go for sale in this group. Not one time. And if they had, they'd have been bought and, and you'd see a mansion sitting there. And there's been offers on two of the homes I know about that uh, for 300000 that were turned down. So it's a myth that, that single-family homes can't be built there. They should be built there. They'll fit in our neighborhood. Probably with just a, a minor variance would be it. And, and our neighborhood would love it. But we've waited 30, 40 years, and we can wait two or three more years for these landowners to understand it's not going to go for a million an acre. And that was kind of the comment of the last meeting here. It's a math problem. And, it, and at five or $600,000 a lot, you can't, that won't sustain a single family home. At 300000 a lot, they'd be gone tomorrow. And the county values them at 280, give or take. So right. we want denial. We, we're, we're tired of the dog and pony show. We'd like to see single family homes. All right, thank, thank you. you. So we have two rings and then the bell to really, I like that. Uh, so the, uh, the applicant gets another minute added to their time if they has right. more time. Are there any more, uh, any, were there any more citizens? Yes. Um, We've already had one public hearing. Are there others, uh, folks? Well, I'd like to give people a chance to talk, uh, you know, and if we, we can extend time for, you know, maybe just five minutes and five minutes rather than 10 and 10. I know we want to move through this agenda, but there are a lot of folks here, and I want to have them, let them have their say. Is there? I'd like to extend five minutes for each side. That's, that's the pleasure of council. All right. All right. We don't need a motion for that. Yes. Do you? Okay. We still. Yeah. We'll, we'll give them five more minutes too. Do it. I don't have anybody in favor. Okay. All right. So we will extend five minutes for each side. Is there, is, there, is there a motion for that? I move that we extend the time five minutes for each side on the public hearing. And I second. Any discussion? All in favor of uh, the motion signifies so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. No, we're going to keep it at five minutes. All right. Scott Bear. How many people do you have, Kathy? Okay. Four. So a minute and 10 seconds apiece, 15 seconds apiece. Good evening. Um, my name is Scott Abair. I live at 4195 Oak Forest Drive. Um, so again, thanks for for listening to our repeated uh, arguments uh, to oppose this. Uh, I am in opposition of this. I've been in my neighborhood for 10 years. Um, I've watched you know families move in, families move out, and continue to see rebuilding of you know large homes. I live next door to uh, Nelson um, Consumi, who is building you know a a really nice, beautiful single-family home, and would like to see more of the same. So, uh, thanks for your attention, and uh, hopefully, you guys will vote in opposition with us. Thank you, thank you, Mr. Aper. Next, we we'll stop the clock between visits. Ashley Owen Avart. I think she just handed you a letter. Was that pronunciation right? Oh, Avart. Okay, yeah. not like Avart. Not Avar. Hey, Bart. Okay. All right, next. Emily Joy Taylor. Thank you all so much for your service to our city and for listening to us this evening. My husband and I moved with our son over 10 years ago to 4181 Oak Forest Drive. Having relocated here from Charlottesville, Virginia, we were eager to find an established neighborhood that felt like a real neighborhood rather than some hastily thrown together developer's idea of what a community might look like. We had such luck in finding in a wonderful neighborhood where accessibility to my workplace pairs unbelievably well with access to wildlife and to nature. The breathtaking tree canopy for which we're known, Oak Forest Hills, so effectively insulates us from 285 and Highway 400 that you can barely hear them, even in wintertime. This proposed zoning change at the top of our neighborhood threatens everything I value about this neighborhood. It also clearly conflicts with the overall vision statement of the comprehensive plan, as well as the city's pledge to be a community that preserves the unique character and history of its neighborhood's parks and natural assets. 
Oak Forest Hills is a model Brookhaven neighborhood as evidenced by the abundance of recent single family new home construction just launched within the, next, within the last six months. If these lots went for sale for single family, they would sell and lovely homes would be built, but we've never had the opportunity. I thank you for listening. I do fear that this is not being done entirely in good faith. We've really tried to meet with them. We're not trying to be unreasonable. We just want our neighborhood to stay a neighborhood. Thank you for your help. Thank you. That concludes opposition. Uh, you, know, you have an extra five minutes that you don't really have to use. <laughs> I don't think you got to worry about me using it all. You know, I think I told you the last time, I feel like I'm in a time warp. Um, Oak Forest neighborhood has been fighting development in this area for over 30 years. They fought everything we ever tried to do across Ashford Dunwoody on, um, on Perimeter Summit and Lake Hearn and all that stuff, along with other neighborhoods. Um, their objections then have been proven wrong, and their objections now relative to this development will be proven wrong. I think Jim and John Cowart and John Whelan would resent the fact that they're accused of building houses and not homes. When you look at who developed this community in the 60s and 70s and 80s, it was, it was a group of builders that built in Dunwoody and built in North DeKalb County. They built homes. We met with these neighbors several times. They said, come back with a cluster product. They didn't say they wanted 14 units. They didn't say they wanted 15 units. They didn't say they wanted 30 units. They said, come back with a cluster product. That's what we've done. We've come back with a cluster product. This is a single family detached home that is not in any way going to adversely affect the value or the, or the ability of these homeowners to enjoy peaceful and quiet parts of their neighborhood. We front a major road. This is a collected corridor. This is not a residential street. And as a result, your comprehensive plan recognizes that you provide some transition. We're consistent with the recommendations of your comprehensive plan. And 29 versus 15, I think at some point you got to say, you know, where is that number just an arbitrary number? Where does it really relate to the protection of the public health, safety, and welfare? And one of the reasons we want this to go back to staff is we want to look at the conditions that staff has imposed on the 36, not the 32, the 36 um, site, uh, unit site plan and see what conditions still apply because basically we're, we're in support of what staff has suggested. Um, and when you, look at, when you look at the overall use of the property and when you look at how we provide transition to established neighborhoods from major corridors with a residential product, not a non-residential product, as I've told you before, I can't tell you the number of times I've had people call me wanting to zone this property for a gas station or office or whatever. Uh, this is a good solution for you. And I don't have to tell you your obligation under the law. Tom can certainly do that. But I think that we've got to look at the protection of the public health, safety, and welfare and the right of the property owner to use this property for a lawful purpose. And your, your ability in exercising your discretion, and we, we hope that we can help you make a, a decision that will be easy because Oak Forest isn't the only neighborhood that's concerned about this. The only folks you've heard from tonight are Oak Forest residents. Okay? There are other folks that live in this area that are concerned about this zoning, and we're meeting with them. And our objective is to come to you with some support. I think we'll get support of your staff which is important, but I think the bottom line, the bottom line is, is this a reasonable use of the property? Does the property as currently zoned have a reasonable use? And is there a density then that allows the property owner to have a, have a reasonable use of, of their property? Doesn't mean it's the highest and best use, and that's not what we're asking for. We're just asking for a reasonable use. We ask that you defer this, give us a chance to meet with staff, give us a chance to continue to meet with the neighborhood, 
Uh, Mr. Coles and his group have pretty well drawn a line in the sand, but I'm going to tell you here and I'll tell him, you know, we're always available to sit down and discuss the merits of the case. Thank you. Oh, Doug, I have a couple of questions for you. Doug? Yeah. Um, I know um, saying that Ashford Dunwoody is not a residential road, um, I think living here all my life, it, you know, that's the one thing that everybody's had a fear of, that it would not be a residential road, that somebody would four-lane it. But in our mind, Ashford Dunwoody needs to always be a residential road always because that protects the integrity of our neighborhoods the r100 and the r75 and the r50 and the r25 i, I just think that um, you know that statement in my mind i just have to disagree with that and i think i know what your point was was about it's it's off the interchange and you, you need a transition i understand that and, and i know it's a collector but um i, I think that well, you might poison the well a little bit by well let me just say i'm not trying to say that they're not residences on actual dunwoody road because right. there are right. and they're multifamily residential as well as non-residential as right. well as but it's not a residential street like the uh, like Oaks forest drive it is a, an arterial collector under our transportation system so it does deal with non-residential characteristics as close to 285, which you're well aware. Right. And that's where we are. That doesn't mean that it doesn't have residential character down toward Marist and, and elsewhere. So no, I, 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 just I, I don't disagree with mailboxes you. Mailboxes and people cutting their grass right. on after that, you know. Right. Um, the other thing was, um, um, if you, you're asking for a deferral, and I think staff is recommending a deferral, the number of, uh, homes at 29 is are, when you come back do you do you foresee that number changing downwards i don't I'm asking you to do it I'm just asking i don't you see, i don't have it. authority to say we would change it below what it is currently you have authority to say that's out of the, out of the question i'm not going to say it i'm not going to say anything's out of the question uh, all right and i'm not going to say that in the exercise of your discretion you can't give another number be it more or less right and then we would have to determine whether that's right or not. But, but I, I think the thing we've got to guard against is just arbitrarily picking a number with no with no relationship to to the underlying property and the value of that property and the people that own it. Rebecca, did you have a question? Well, I, my question was about whether this was the final number because, quite frankly, I guess I had misunderstood your revision to that it was going to come down even more. Well, let me just say this, Ms. Williams. <laughs> yes. He's giving her a look right now. So. You know, my husband calls him Darth Vader. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait a minute. Now, i got to clarify that. He also, that mean Darth Vader. When he, he also, Darth Vader. when he found out I was an organic farmer, wanted to do an article that said Darth Vader goes green. <laughs> yeah, there you go. So, there you go. But, but we're not, we don't, we're, we're in a position right now where we're negotiating with ourselves. We did this unilaterally after a meeting. We dropped it, we dropped it almost a third. And we still can't get, I mean, nobody, they're, they're sitting there saying no, 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 and we need some leadership. I, I, I personally think you're still, it's still too high of a number. I, I mean, I'm sympathetic to what I'm hearing. We, I'm personally, and I think all of us are pledged to preserving our neighborhoods and what makes uh, the, our city so unique. Um, I, I'm... I want this uh, gateway to Brookhaven enhanced as much as anyone. I I'm actually pretty offended by the rental houses that, you know, are not very attractive right there. But Alan is absolutely right. They stay rented. The one that got crushed by the, the tree was rebuilt. Um, I I'm almost coming to around to the opinion that we need to deny you so that you can go back to these owners and say this just isn't going to fly. Well, I don't think a denial is a, is the answer because a denial we we got to wait two years to come back. A denial is not going to give us an opportunity because the neighbors beat us at that point. So we just we'll have to go to court. Okay, that's not what anybody wants, you know. And what I'm well, what, what I'm would be point the chance that you would go back to the drawing board? Uh, Rockhaven makes a great product. They're a good builder. We we love what they're what they're the other work they're doing in Brookhaven. Um, but I think we'd like to. I think the neighbors and, and some of us would like to see a lot fewer houses on this on this track. So when they say 14 or 15, I haven't heard any discussion as to how feasible that might be. 
That's still a whole lot denser than the, what, four or five houses that are there now? Well, that's something we can pursue. I'm not going to sit here and tell you tonight. No, I'm not I asking don't have for authority promises. To, I don't have authority to do it. You go, so, if you go back. Take, take the, I mean, if you want, if you want to address that at all, I'm not asking you for a number. I'm just asking if, there, if, that, if that's hard and fast or if you have to go back and do some different plans. Mayor, Mayor, I, I, think, I, think, I think the message is sent. I don't know. If, to the extent that you should be negotiating this from I'm not the, negotiating. From the I'm just asking the question. I, because that, that hinges on whether a deferral or denial, I would think. In our decision-making, we have to know, well, if we deny this or if we defer this, is it going to come back the same number or one more? Or what is the possibility that the number would come down? If they're seeking some relief with a deferral, and we have residents here who are in, in <coughs> much in favor of denial. Well, I think, I think the message you're sending is, is if, they, if, he, if he does not believe that they can come down to the number and he has no authority and his client's not here to discuss it with him, he, there's nothing he can answer. Right He's sitting right there. That's, that's what I was asking. Jay Max, may, may I just say, I think the message has gotten across and if they don't do it in the next round of negotiation, then I think it's something we could I address. Just assumes well, what the, I just what want to be assured. Be. I think this is what the mayor is asking too. I, I just want to be assured that if we give you the deferral that you go back and that we can have a round of productive talks. It sounds like you've kind of come to a bit of an impasse. and we, We've come to an impasse only with Oak Forest. We've not come to an impasse with any other group that we're talking to. Well, I think you need to worry about Oak Forest. Well, we're going to we'll, – look, I think, I think Oak right, Forest – Yeah, done. I think Oak Forest is pretty well dug in the sand. They're at 14 to 15 units. Our, 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 our hope is that we can work with other neighborhoods – and get some support from those other neighborhoods, and uh, we might have an, a different argument. We might have a different discussion. But the but the but the thing that I believe the city can do is to provide for, as I said, leadership. Maybe it's mediation. Maybe it's whatever. We've been the one because we're the applicant, and I don't have a problem with that. Trying to get a court. Okay. We met, we met with Mr. Robinson and Mr. Coles, and they came back at 14 to 15. We're at 29. So that's where so we are. So if we deferred, uh, are, you, are we optimistic Here, that there might the be some you're, you're, If you want to let your progress? client say something. Brad Hughes at Rock Cabin Homes. That's not a, it's not a question that can be answered in okay. two seconds. Sure. Sure. Um, we know that. Because, you know, the staff comments may change. There's a whole lot that goes into saying whether or not, you know, we can do, you know, five or 10 or 15 or stay at 29. So it's a, it's a long process that once we meet with staff, get their recommendations, get their conditions, and go back and meet with other neighborhoods, see what they say. And if at the end of the day, like I told Clay and I told Mr. Cole, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. We'll pull the application and move on down the road. So um, I'm not going to continue to sit here and beat my head up against the wall just for the heck of it. So... We're all trying to come to a common ground here okay. to make everything a win. I think everybody knows that. That's what, you know, <clears throat> we're, and you know, so if it doesn't work, you will just pull the application and move on. But I would, um, you know, like um, respectfully request, you know, the um, deferral to give us time to work on that. And it's, a, you know, after meeting with all the other neighborhoods, it's either going to work or it's not. And, you know, so we'll either be here in March or we won't be here in March. All right. I'm, I'm glad to hear that because nobody wants to waste time on this. These folks don't want to waste time. I don't want to waste your time. Time is money for you guys, too. So if I think we can have some productive talks by sending you back, I'm, I'd be willing to support that. Brad, what's one the quick question? One, your question for, for the Yeah, one quick question. Residents for Doug. Yeah, Doug, and the, or the developer, the applicant. Uh, do you have a sidewalk here on? on uh, yeah. I'm not sure I see a sidewalk drawn in. Yeah, I think the there's a side. I can't remember all the conditions that Susan and I think there's a sidewalk, yeah. On the, on that side as well, and there's some landscaping. Right. Uh, Are you doing a landscape come, buffer? Has, and there's turn it? lane coming out of uh, Oak Forest. And that yeah. Kind of thing. Ben, is that it, you doing the five two two what? foot landscape five foot sidewalk or? There's what? conditions associated with sidewalks along uh, Oak Forest as well as Ashford Dunwoody. Uh -huh. In terms of the uh, the buffer aspect, it comes down to which one is it going to be an attached or detached product. Right. That's going to determine if a buffer is required or not. Well, we're looking at detached here, so. So if it's detached and if that's what the applicant is going to proceed with, then there is no requirement for a transitional buffer. Um, you're talking a buffer between the neighborhood between and the Between the neighborhood, but they're still going to be required to. Uh, uh, do sidewalk. 
install sidewalk along right. both street fronts. That is correct. Is, is there any kind of, is it just a straight five or are you going to landscape? Is there a plan for Ashford Dunway <coughs> at all? Par paragraph nine yeah, talks about see. the curb and gutter and the sidewalk. Uh -huh. It's five foot sidewalk. Five foot, but yeah. no landscape buffer. And there's a landscape too. But is there any kind of right of way um, issues? So there, I mean, yeah, it, this is, um, so it states condition number one, or public public works comment number one, the existing right of way Ashford Dunwoody Road along the subject property is 60 feet wide, 30 feet from Center Road, Ashford Dunwoody is classified as a major thoroughfare, which requires a right of way width of 150 feet from Center of Road, so there's going to be a requirement for dedication of right of way. And that's if, okay with us. If traffic gets any worse, that's the only way people are going to be able to get around out there. You, you got to do something. Because you got to get some alternate people Doug, out of the, their cars. What's, what is the estimated uh, sale price of each of these units? You I'm going to say Brad? somewhere between six and seven fifty. Okay, we heard five. Of, somebody said five four. It's a product. It's a product of development cost and what they're having to pay for the land. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, under the current site plan, it's definitely will have to be in the sixes and go up from there. It, it won't work any other way. Mm -hmm. So, and it's going to be a nice product. It's going to be, um, you know, price point. There'll probably be more per square foot than other houses. We built inside there. We bought a lot from Clay Robertson where he lives. <coughs> and built a house on it and sold it in eight hundred. So, I mean, we we ha we have you know stuff in there. So uh, you know, it's uh. You know, we build in that neighborhood, and it, but it's not the same as being back in on a you know single lot back in there is nowhere near the same as being at the corner of this intersection. And what the, kind the, of the, the you know lane use you know calls this update units of acre. We're under that. And the square footage of these units approximately three to thirty five hundred. So, thank you. When you uh, go back to the drawing board a little bit more too, I, I hope you'll take into into uh, account the issues that they have about setbacks and the, the sideways facing the streets? The only only variance on a setback is on the um, lower half where there's 20, um, 20 units is the setback. All the other setbacks should be um, within the within code, yep, within the zone. That's the only variance is asking for that to be reduced down to five. Everything else is per the zoning code. Okay, it just as you know, this is a gateway development, and we, we really want you to bring your and best game. To Bates is, you know, requested. I mean, along Ashford Dunwoody, we've already, you know, shown the trees that you've, you know, requested. I mean, yeah. it'll be heavily landscaped with, you know, it'll look beautiful up and down there. It's going to have to. So. Right, thank you. Does anybody have more questions for the applicant? Does anybody have any questions for any of the residents who spoke? Okay. Thank you. Sorry, sir. We. It, we we, I'm sorry, I understand. Um, if you want to come into the podium and give your name and, and speak. Um. <clears throat> we got about 30 seconds left on the... Just out of respect, yeah. I'm just speaking about my house. Give your name. My name is Jim Feeney. I live at 4311 Oak Forest Way. I live in that subdivided piece of property that he was speaking about, and I did not pay $800,000 for that home. And, and I'll tell you, we moved here from Memphis. We looked at 67 houses, okay? And you think this is tedious. My wife had to find the right home in the right neighborhood. And unfortunately, what they're proposing, and I don't know if you've been up and down that street at school time for traffic, for mayor in Montgomery, what they're proposing is, is going to be crazy. So I just, you know, wanted to make that clear. Thank so, you. Thank you. Okay. Now, that's a man with patience. Right. <laughs> You have to, sir. Um, uh, we, Alan. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, close, yeah. The close, yeah. close the public we need to, comment. We can't have comments from the audience. We just can't ever. I've never accepted that. We can't do that. We've got to maintain that. All right. Is there a motion? I, I'm going to move that we, um, what's the number on this one? RZ14-16. We need to close the public hearing. Yeah, close, public, your, close the public, public hearing. Public hearing is closed. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and take both of them since they're both yes, related? Yes, 16 and 17. Okay. Okay, so I move that uh, for ordinance 2014-11-05, RZ14-16 and RZ14-17, I move that we remand it to the, uh, to the Planning Commission and bring it back to City Council uh, for our March 24th meeting. Second. Any discussion? I, I just hope that we'll have some productive talks 
that will take into account the many, uh, you know, good constructive comments, uh, that we can continue to, to have some positive dialogue and come back with, uh, with a product that really uh, we can all be proud of. I would just, uh, as I always do, I always encourage people to, you know, open their minds and talk to folks, talk amongst one another, one another, talk with the applicant, talk, the applicant needs to talk with the uh, residents of Oak Forest and other neighbors, but Oak Forest is the one that's be primarily Im impacted by this development, uh, and just leave um, snide or bitter comments at the door and just come in and try to work something out if you can. You might not be able to, but try to do it in a neighborly way, in a civil way, that's all I ask. All right, anybody else have any comments? All right. Uh, all in favor of the motion to remain to the Planning Commission signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right, the motion carries. We'll take a one minute recess while folks exit. I guess um, mayor's opening remarks. I just wanted to, I just wanted to thank everybody. Uh, you know, my mother passed away over Christmas. I wanted to thank everybody who expressed kind words and uh, thoughts uh, about my mother and to me and appreciate it. And wanted to point out a couple of folks in particular. Um, Don and Adrena Richard uh, uh, sent this. My mother would have loved this. Sent a got something in the mail when we got back from uh, the, um, the funeral. <coughs> Uh, they planted a tree in my mother's name in the Holy Land, and that would have been she would have that would have tickled her paint. And so I wanted to publicly thank the wow. Richards for doing that. And um, and Mike Hassinger also uh, his he and his family donated uh, some funds in my mother's name to breast cancer research. So that's why I'm wearing the pink ribbon. And I just want to tell everybody, staff included, to appreciate the thought, the kind thoughts and words during that difficult time. So thank you. Thank you to the Post for running my mother's obituary for so long. I appreciate that. All right. Agenda announcements. We already have done those, haven't we? I do need a motion from the council to amend the agenda, as I stated okay. uh, at the opening. There's a motion to amend the agenda as stated by the city manager. Yeah, I think I wrote it down. I, all right. So I move that we amend the agenda to add consent item number five to add the employee raises to the consent agenda uh, as presented in our work session? Number six. Number oh, six. sorry, sorry, correct that. Consent item number six. Uh, to add employee raises to the uh, budget as presented according to the plan in the work session. Um, also remove item number two from the reports and presentations and to move old business item number one to to, to new business, item number two. Correct. There a second? I'll second. All right. All in favor of the motion, signify somebody saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Public comment? Carol Carstens? Carol Carstens. Carol Carstens, 2444 Usnola Drive, speaking as a private citizen only. I just had a, a quick request that I'd like for you guys to visit here early in the year is if we could get vending machines here, one here at City Hall <laughs> with some snacks and stuff for us, and in the parks, if we could get some vending machines at the three rec centers right now with some Gatorade and protein bars and some healthy things for the kids. I'd appreciate it if you guys I always have good that. ideas, Terrell. That's a great idea. <laughs> we really need some Gatorade and stuff at the parks. Gatorade. Yeah. Wheatgrass, things like that. All right, Joe, you're coming around. Joe can start the, start the, you should have a little section reserved for yourself in each vending machine. Uh, Ronnie Mayer. All right, Ronnie. That's a good idea, staff, by the way. So we can facilitate that. There have been some vendors that have already been visiting with the Parks and Rec Department and also um, with Brad. We, we talked about mm -hmm. youth entrepreneurs also, remember that? 
Pardon me? Youth entrepreneurs. Yes, absolutely. Having the kids yeah. get involved and help to maintain yeah. the parks with vending machines. Good evening. How's everybody tonight? We got a new year going on. Uh, I've got a few items here I just want to discuss. Uh, we hear through parks that y'all are going to hire a consultant at a, a couple hundred grand to help draw up a, a plan or something. Uh, I could be wrong, but if we ha ha it, I would rather not hire a consultant to do anything for our Brookhaven Parks, especially Asher Park or the ones on the, as we call the other side of the railroad tracks. I'd rather spend the, the money ourselves. Uh, Georgian Hills Park needs a new culvert on at Bragg Street to, to get the water out of there when it rains real hard. And once we get that done, then you could do plans in the park area there. If not, anything you build when it rains hard is going to flood there. So we need to really get a few of the, the players who have ate, drank, and sleep these parks for years. I mean, I know y'all have got good groups doing it, but he needs some of us old guys that really know what's going on. You need to consult with, and we're free. You coming to that? Oh, yeah, we're free. And we've had a city here now for two years. I don't know if it's a power play by anybody, but I still want to plant my trees on Peak Stream. Uh, we spend a lot, of, a lot of money on the cherry trees. I hope we don't see the, the cherry trees in a year and a half just really die off. I hope we have a plan who's going to water them. But I have free trees to plant on peach tree, and I keep getting phone calls about the old holes that were dug there. And I can get the police to, to block off a lane. I've got free trees, free. And I've got an eye for planting. So if y'all just <laughs> give me the wink and the yay, it'll go. I'll plant peach tree from Dresden to to Osborne, and I'll make you very proud, and it's not going to cost you a penny. Thank you. And uh, I guess, uh, and then I reserve my little extra time left to help y'all with this, uh, the record ordinance. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Betsy Eggers. Um, Marie, if you will um, get with Jerry about the culvert at Jordan Hills, Jordan Terrace, I would, that would be a good uh, Product, immediate project I think we can, we can do. Go ahead. Hi, I'm Betsy Eggers with the North Fork Connectors. We um, suggest that we change names. For a linear park of this scope, we need a big, easy to recognize name. Rather than the North Fork of Peachtree Creek Park or Path or Greenway, it should simply be, begin Peachtree Creek, whatever. Our organization will continue to use the name North Fork Connectors, but we hope the city embraces the idea of the use of Peachtree Creek as the primary name of this visionary place to come. It can be Peachtree Creek Greenway and is one idea, and we will continue to pull people and find out other ideas that, that we will come forward with some ideas. Um, second, the North Fork Connectors publicly announced their unanimous support of the 3% increase in the hotel motel tax. For the sake of clarity, although not legality, we'd like to refer to it as fee to promote tourism, 3%. Furthermore, the North Fork Connectors advocate that 100% of the 3% increase be fully allocated to new park con pro procurement and construction in the 4th District. Ironically, not one of our board is in the 4th District, but we see that this is a need for the whole of the city and it will be a regional park. So that's why we are not advocating money of this magnitude go just to here and here and here. That it needs to really, on your part, you need to commit to the Linear Park, the Peachtree Creek Greenway. Um, it will have a regional draw. It will help fill Brookhaven hotels and become a regional attraction, as the Beltline has become. Once the park is built, the 3% fee to promote tourism increase can go 50-50 to maintenance of the linear park and other city parks as well. 
Only one of you on the council represents the 4th District, but all of you have recognized the importance of this legacy park. The Peachtree Creek Path Parker Trail, all of the four consultancy companies embraced it in their recent reports. This is an easy funding choice, but it's up to you five to do the right thing, 100% going to the Peachtree Creek Greenway until it's fully built. Thanks so much. Thank you. Next. Very good suggestion. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Catherine Bernard. Oaklawn Avenue and I'll I'll try to be brief but I was troubled by the 330 page agenda packet to try to get through today and what I wanted to talk to you about is that it feels like people are being discouraged from participating in Brookhaven City politics simply because of the volume of information and new ordinances that we are constantly being faced with it seems like at every single meeting we have there's some new ordinance today we've got several on the agenda that we have to look through and it's prohibitive for people to get involved it's difficult for them to to pick through through all this new legislative material, and a lot of people simply don't participate. We saw a lot of people just leave after after the first item on the agenda tonight because, unfortunately, you know they have babysitters to get back to. They don't have time to to spend all night here at a city council meeting. And frankly, you know the the people from here up are the ones getting paid to be here. The other people are the ones who are paying to be here. And I think it does show a disrespect for their time when there are continued deferrals and there are continued 330-page agenda packets for us to deal with. So what I would ask is that you would consider maybe taking it down a notch, slowing it down a little bit. We just handled this comprehensive plan back in November, and now we're already coming back to amend it. And I understand that the annexation does create new issues, and I understand the redevelopment issue has to be changed to green space over on Claremont, and that that's actually a desirable change. But it's very difficult for citizens to keep up with what's going on in their city, and I know that wasn't the intent of starting the city. It was to give people more local control and more understanding of what was going on in their communities and their daily lives and honestly it seems like the reverse has happened now in addition to keeping up with what's going on in DeKalb people have to keep up with 330 page agenda packets coming out from the City Council every two weeks also there are a couple of issues with uh, in things that didn't show up on the agenda a 3% pay increase for all city employees that's the kind of thing that people would have wanted to know about in advance not <coughs> added to the agenda at the last minute that's the kind of thing that people should have the opportunity to discuss. I, I don't know if you plan to vote on that tonight, but you will be voting on it without most people in the city knowing on knowing that, and that's a problem. Most people don't even know how many city employees we have. It's hard to get a handle on that. You know, I, I moved here when this was unincorporated to cab, and there were a lot of nice things about that. But Brookhaven is a great place to be. We understand that it's going to continue to get more desirable constantly. But please, I ask you to just calm down on the regulations, calm down on the ordinances. All you are doing is enriching the lawyers. And that's what we see in this engagement thing with Bring the Exhibit A. A. I, I promise I will just be very brief. Keep in mind that all of these special projects are adding up tremendously, and all it's doing is creating more work for the citizens who aren't getting paid paid to be here who aren't getting paid to pick through. So on the amendment to the comprehensive plan, are we going to be amending it constantly every time a developer asks? So thank you for your consideration and please <coughs> shorten up the agenda packets. Thank you. Next. There are no others. All right. Um, I have a question. Was the, um, the raise for city employees, wasn't that brought up at our last meeting? In, it was in um, December. Yes, it was discussed in December at both the public hearings, and the council uh, uh, directed that the evaluation procedures and process and forms uh, would be sent to you all um, before you would consider the release of that. So you held that. Right. Uh, there was quite a bit of discussion on it. Right. In order, in other words, to clarify that that, that amount is already in the budget, right. for which there were all those hearings. Correct. Yeah, that amount, the three percent was in the budget we passed in December, and then this issue was deferred from the December meeting. All right. Um, where are we? Consent agenda. Yes, um, the consent agenda has six items, uh, predominantly made up of. Uh, meeting minutes. Uh, the last item was what was amended in the uh, agenda to provide for the release of funds as uh, included in the uh, 2015 budget for purposes of uh, 
increases, salary increases. I might mention again for the record, because we did talk about this at the uh, work session, that of that 3%, 50%, 1.5% um, constitutes the cost of living. And did we also discuss in the work session that the 3% um, isn't an automatic for everybody? No, it is not. Right. It's a uh, right. cost of living is, but the rest of it is based right. on evaluation. All right. Is there a motion? Uh, I'll move that we uh, uh, approve the consent agenda items one through six. Seconded. Any discussion? Uh, I just want to reiterate what, what you all talked about. Th this is the 3% uh, the increase for salaries, which, as was pointed out, was talked about uh, several times in our uh, budget hearings. And work sessions. And work sessions and was passed. What we asked for last time was simply that before we uh, gave any kind of across the board increases that the, we directed the city manager to come up with a, a performance evaluation policy, which she has, which we reviewed uh, in the work session. And as um, Marie pointed out, one uh, of this 3% increase <clears throat> that we're is, is, in, is on the table right now. 1.5% of that is a cost of living increase. And then the rest of it uh, will be, will be uh, if, if it is in fact even awarded on the employee's <coughs> anniversary, is determined by this, uh, this new performance evaluation scale that has been developed by um, Marie and our, and our HR department. Um, I'm quite pleased with this. I think it's, it's exactly what we asked the city manager to come up with. Um, I think we'll refine it as we go forward, as we discussed in the work session, um, and I think it's a it's a great step forward in in having performance evaluations of, of our uh, and measurable outcomes for our employees. Yeah, in concert with that, I mean the, the budget hearings and the any all these ordinances that we have that come up on our agendas. I mean, part of this is is endemic to startup, is it not? If we don't have these things in our agenda, we open the city up to liability for not being covered when it comes to having the proper ordinances adopted. Is uh, that absolutely? And remember, some of the ordinances, um, especially uh, towards the end of the year, the the last quarter, uh, why there were so many. We had a sunset, if you'll recall. Uh, so we did have to um, amend those and make them more uh, Brookha Brookhaven oriented and. Um, Adopt them, readopt them, because when the city was incorporated, all all DeKalb County ordinances were right. adopted. So this is our our process and our way of going back and amending them. Uh, and tonight, that is a reflection uh, of that. Uh, How long will this agenda. process go on? As far as you know, we adopted the cabin ordinances. Now we're going back to make sure they're fit with our city. How long do you think that'll go on? Because it's taxing not on just the, like Miss Bernard pointed on the citizens, but you know, we have families and kids too, and we it's, we don't like staying here till midnight or 11 o'clock. How long will this drudgery on this end go on? <laughs> well, um, I would think maybe over the next couple of months. But but I'd like to make this this comment. Um, I hope your ordinances never become stale. Right. I hope they'll reflect the tra the trends and changes and the desires and philosophy of of this council and and what you do to represent your citizenry. So that if there is a, a need to change, that you will be open to that and responsive to uh, amending ordinances um, when, when it's proper. I'd like to add just a couple points. You know, if there's anybody who would love to see us not have 300 page agendas, it's mm -hmm. probably the five of us <laughs> up here. Um, so your comments are, are appreciated. Um, um, we hear you. You know there there are there are some responsibilities that in running the city and I and I really haven't um, I think that the city staff is doing an efficient job of trying to process the needs of the city uh, regarding the the employment raises I think it's important to point out that this is a policy that will be going into effect in 2015 uh, it is very much merit based aside from the 1.5 percent increase for cost of living adjustment. <laughs> and people need to remember that the majority of the employees of the city of Brookhaven are our police officers, some of the most valuable people who are out there protecting and, and putting themselves in harm's way every day for us. So uh, it's important that we have good policies that keep those people uh, retained and um, keep them um, you know, as, as happy employees of the city of Brookhaven. I'll just close by saying that um, 
I do agree that we're probably the five that want to see the least amount of paperwork, but we are a city of ethics, and one of our main policies is to be as transparent as possible. And unfortunately, with that comes the responsibility that when we do these ordinances, we want to make sure that we have every piece of information that we possibly can provide that would substantiate what it is we're doing in a transparent manner. Uh, and then on the pay raise, yes, um, we definitely do not want to be a runaway government where uh, money is automatically allocated to people every year, year after year. So we're, we've instituted this policy here with the assistance of our city manager. Uh, will there will be accountability and a performance criteria for evaluation purposes that will uh, purposefully address what an adequate and earned uh, increase would be uh, in addition to cost of living increases. So I'm pleased that we are moving along and I'm very, very confident that this whole process will get even better as we finish, as we go through 2015 and I look forward to revisiting this in 2016. Right, any more comment or questions? All right. All in favor of the motion signify so by six saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. The motion carries. Announcements? We have none. Um, just that, again, the Park of Brookhaven meetings, I mentioned that before. But also, that uh, I want to let everybody know that the city, uh, your electeds and staff will be undergoing training tomorrow, uh, tomorrow morning. 10 a.m.? 10 a.m. Uh, to uh, further our. Joe, you want to talk about. Briefly, what it is that we're doing tomorrow? Yeah, we've got. Uh, we are the uh, first certified city in the state, um, working with the governor's office for uh, family and children, um, for the prevention of sexual exploitation of children, and we have uh, uh, Street Grace coming in tomorrow, who is the, uh, one of the strongest advocates and professional organizations uh, in the state, uh, coming in and putting on the first training, which will be the first of many. And our objective is to train, at this point, city staff. If you come into that tomorrow? No, we had GBI um, actually training today, and they're coming in tomorrow for the whole police department. Okay, we'll have uh, further announcements on this in time as this program expands into uh, uh, n other parts of our community and uh, objectives on what we hope to achieve and the example we hope to set for the rest of the state and other cities to exemplify what this uh, great community of Brookhaven is doing. It's right. called the Not Buying It program? Not, not buying, buying It, right. Uh, all right. Next uh, reports from Jennifer Harper. Uh, yes, um, item number one is the uh, presentation by uh, Jennifer Harper from the PCID uh, seeking support on a um, grant application that they are making. All right, go ahead, Jennifer. Good evening. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Thank you for having us. Um, and I appreciate the opportunity to share another exciting project. We're constantly um, looking at ways to improve traffic and pedestrian facilities and perimeter. And um, we're here tonight seeking your, your support for our grant application coming up for the Atlanta Regional Commission um, in 2015. Do you have the... Okay. Um, and I, um, I'm here on behalf of Yvonne. I know she would rather be here making this presentation to you this evening, um, but uh, her time commitments are, are not going to allow her to be here, so you are stuck with me. You're always um, welcome, Jennifer. Thank you. And I am just a mile from home, so I'm, I'm, glad, to, I'm glad to make this stop on my way home anytime I need to. Um, I have, um, we have been working with the Atlanta Regional Commission since the last quarter of 14. Um, in anticipation that they would be coming out with a new call for grants. Um, they have pulled together several uh, pots of money, the, um, the TAP program and LCI program, put it into one pot, and they have put out a call for projects for implementation. Um, so we have um, put together a project that um, just touches Brookhaven, which is why we're here tonight. Um, it's on the Lake Hearn, where the flyover bridge touches down. Um, so that corner of it would be in the Brookhaven section. So we would, we would very much like your support for us improving that area and continuing the beautification all the way up to mm -hmm. Peachtree Dunwoody. What do you need from us? Letter of support. Yes, can we, um, Marie, can we uh, do you get a letter of support to the PCID for this grant? Yes. All right. Boy, that was hard, wasn't it? It was, okay. <laughs> well, um, what exactly I, is the I improvement? I, I, I think a, she's trying to get her presentation up on the I screen. Have a PowerPoint to show I you. I emailed it to you. Stalling. You got it? We just got it. Okay. Um, I'll give a brief overview on 
<laughs> set in it with the uh, set on this presentation once before as the liaison to the development authority. It's a good presentation, focusing on pedestrians, bike paths, um, connectivity within the whole PCID region. Um, it's I think very focused around uh, quality of life for the people up there, and also reducing traffic and providing alternative modes of transportation. So that's my two cents in a nutshell. All right. Let's see how long it takes you, Jennifer. All right. Oh really. Okay. Um, scroll. You're just not scroll. Scroll. Okay, that's fine. Next one. Next. There we go. No, that's not it. The, this. Is it a different presentation? It is a different presentation. Becky emailed it. I don't have that. Then. You want to just tell us about it? What, what exactly? It's not the one we had at the development no. Can I give you huh. this handout? Sure, that'd be great. Yeah. We, we're for, we're familiar with this, but I am. Uh, okay. While Jennifer's uh, handing you. that out, I'm yeah, just going to uh, yeah. give her a big thank you to the uh, PCID and to PTOP and to GDOT uh, for all their assistance and uh, help on the uh, intersection fix at Ashford Dunwoody and Johnson Ferry Road. I hope you all have had a chance to drive through it. I think it's working marvelously. Yeah. We've had to have some relearning uh, by our drivers, but I think we're finally getting it now. And uh, uh, I, I truly think that it's making a dramatic difference uh, in the traffic flow there. Things are moving. And I'm a user every day, and it is definitely making a difference in my commute. I can see it the minute I come across the DDI, Ashford Dunwoody is moving, which was not the case. So it is, it is a, a great improvement. Yes. Um, can we zoom that a little bit on screen? A little? Can we? Okay, so the project that we are submitting to the Atlanta Regional Commission for their 2015 call for grants is uh, building off of a project that we already have to improve the intersection of perimeter center of the intersection of Lake Hearn and Peachtree Dunwoody Road. Um, if you've ever been down the Perimeter Summit Parkway that we just completed by the new hotel in Brookhaven, as soon as you get to the Flyover Bridge, there's a gap there that doesn't have necessarily the PCID standards. Um, and it is a two-lane road, and it's quite frankly a bottleneck in our market. Um, also, if you're coming Peachtree Dunwoody from, uh, from the PCID market heading south, um, towards the hospital district, um, under that 285 overpass is a, is a huge bottleneck. So we had a million dollar CERTA grant that we are working under to get that intersection resolved. Um, we just had a PIOH in December, December 18th um, where we presented two alternatives. And um, we have a solution for that area and we have the money to get it designed and get it through the preliminary engineering phase. Um, when the call for grants came out, um, we, we wanted to expand upon that project, take it all the way down to Hammond, go from Hammond all the way over to the Dunwoody Marta Station where the new State Farm property is, and then take the Perimeter Center Parkway section all the way across the Flyover Bridge into Brookhaven, and then back around up Lake Hearn to complete that entire grid inside the market, make it bicycle pedestrian friendly, light it, and really connect the medical center MARTA station to the Dunwoody MARTA station. Um, in doing that, we're eligible to uh, have MARTA be the sponsor, um, which gives us the ability to flex the funds over to FTA funds. Um, and what that does is get us out of that plan development process that's required when you get federal funds. CERTA funds are not federal funds. The FTA funds would be federal funds, but a different process, a much more streamlined process. That means that we could be shovel, we could be putting a shovel in the ground in 16 on this project. We could fast track this, make a complete loop inside the market, make that connectivity. We could um, improve the traffic flow um, and all of that uh, without any matching funds required from uh, the CID or from our city partners. Um, so that is the project that we plan to submit. We appreciate um, your support for this project, um, which will bolster our case for our multi-jurisdictional collaboration at the CID, which is such a successful model. Um, and we've provided your staff with a draft of that letter of support, um, which they can provide to you, Mayor, for signature. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um. The next item. Uh, we removed item number two, so on to number three, appointment of Mayor Pro Tem. 
Uh, is there a motion to table this? I move that we table the discussion of items three and four to just three. Three. Just three. I second. Two. Well, do you need a certain date certain? No. Okay. All right. So if, if you table it, it'll come up at the next meeting. All right. So uh, my second holds. All right. And any discussion? All in favor of tabling signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Number four. Uh, number four is appointment of Alcohol Board of Appeals. Who's mm -hmm. the appointment? Looking for the names here. Right. Okay. All right. All right. Um, I'm going to nominate Mr. Paul Tomaszewski, longtime Brookhaven resident, business owner, to the. No, he's not here. To the Alcohol Board of Appeals. Uh, all in favor of his appointment signify so by saying aye. Aye. I'm aye. sorry. Aye. 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 A motion to a right. <laughs> <laughs> I made the I can't make motions. Yes. Aye. I think he's replacing Gliani Fagundo. Correct. Yes. Is funny, is I um I move that we make the changes to the appointments of the alcohol board as stated by the mayor. Second. Any discussion? One of the, Ms. Fagundo ha, did a great job, but she uh, has family and time commitments and work commitments that she felt she couldn't uh, fulfill her um, com commitment effectively. So we appreciate her service. She did a great job, and we're going to welcome Mr. Tomaszewski to the uh, Alcohol Board of Appeals. It's a very important board, as we found out this past year. All right. All those in favor? All in favor. Signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Next one. Uh, the next item is the initiation of the comprehensive plan amendment. Uh, we do have our consultant, uh, Amanda from Jacobs, here this evening. I'll make a presentation. Okay. If you can give us just a minute, um, we need to pull up the PowerPoint. Looks like we're ready to go. Good evening, Mayor and Council. It's a pleasure to be back here. Um, since you all adopted your comprehensive plan in December, um, since that time, um, some important amendments have been brought to the attention of you all through the public and. Um, um, city staff and um, we've been brought in to help you all um, look at making those amendments to the plan and so tonight I'm going to very briefly highlight what those proposed changes are. There's really three major areas that we're looking at changing. Um, one is the addition of the newly annexed areas, the Children's Healthcare of Atlanta and Executive Park areas on, on the southern side of the city. We're also looking at making some adjustments to four of the, care, of the 13 character areas and then also making a modification to the priority redevelopment parcels map and I'll talk about each of those a little bit more moving forward. So the first character area we're looking at making changes to is the historic Brookhaven character area. Um, and here is what is existing in the plan. Uh, you can see the character area extends down Maybury Road um, to the Peachtree Road corridor, and it also extends um, a bit um, down Fuller Road into uh, the Osborne, um, abutting the Osborne character area. The overall uh, vision for the area it is staying the same, um, but I do want to point out that there are currently in the ex existing adopted plan two gateway areas that we talk about at Fuller Road and Northern Mabry Road. Um, those areas uh, are different from the uh, National Register Historic District. So those relate um, specifically to the edits um, that are, are being proposed, which are on the next slide. 
Um, so one of the uh, changes that is proposed is to remove the reference to specific streets. We talk about um, Mabry Road um, and Fuller Road as gateways into the district that um, should be preserved to protect the character of historic Brookhaven, although they are slightly different, so they need to be treated differently. We're talking about removing um, those references. Um, also talking about removing uh, Fuller Road east of um, you can't see it on that diagram, but east the creek there is actually the border on the east side of the creek on Fuller Road, which includes Brookhaven Court and Brookhaven Row. Um, they would be removed from this character area and put into the Osborne character area. Um, and actually, if you'll go back, a couple other quick edits on that are um, re we will recalculate uh, the residential densities if that edit's made. Um, in the plan currently, there are residential densities for um, the historic Brookhaven core and the northern Brookhaven, uh, northern historic Brookhaven, and um, it was suggested that we just do one residential calculation for that whole area. Um, as a uh, consultant, we still recommend that you keep those two areas different because the historic Brookhaven core does have larger lot sizes that match with the historic character where you the northern portion um, is is newer development um, and so using that as a guide you really want to kind of keep those separate to help with decision making down the road the Osborne character area as a result of this uh, proposed change would also need to be edited um, the only change that we're talking about here um, is adding that fuller road portion that was take it that is suggested to be taken out of the historic Brookhaven character area and adding it into the, his, to the Osborne character area, which you can see that on the next slide there. <coughs> Again, those are, are two um, townhome developments just east of, there's a creek there um, that abuts that area. For the Ashford Park, um, Drew Valley character area, um, we're actually just talking about making an edit um, to the redevelopment. Currently, it's shown as a redevelopment parcel there on Claremont Road. This is actually the former runway um, for the airport. Um, it, the city has looked into uh, the property a little bit more. Um, there definitely are some stream buffer uh, requirements that would apply to the property, um, potentially some other environmental uh, unique characteristics, but um, it has been communicated that the priority for the community is for this um, to be a green space. So the proposed change um, to this character area is um, changing that redevelopment uh, property designation to green space, which is highlighted on the next slide. Um, I do want to point out that this also has an edit to the priority redevelopment parcels map, which comes at the beginning of the community goal section. Um, that property was also identified as a priority redevelopment parcel where we identify all the priority redevelopment parcels in the city so we would be changing that out and it would be indicated as um, green space on that map. The last character area um, that that is suggested to make edits to, some of which are, are necessary, um, in the Buford Highway Corridor the is um, first of all adding um, we're actually talking about remaining the, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm rambling on here. We're keeping the overall vision here, but looking at the next slide, we can talk about the changes that are proposed. Um, same vision, but we're adding in the annex properties there um, on the other side of I-85. Um, so that includes the um, Children's Healthcare of Atlanta property, and Executive Park. Um, for now, if you'll recall in the plan, it does say that this, uh, the Buford Highway corridor should be looked at in more detail down the road, and so that would apply um, to these properties as well. Can so. I ask you a question? What is obtained guidance at SC meeting? Steering committee okay. meeting. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, right now, uh, or what, what is being proposed is that potentially we might add some more additional implementation strategies um, and a, a statement or two to the vision um, should it come out of uh, public input in that steering committee meeting um, to account for those areas. There. Thank you. Um, the other change that uh, would happen is to this, if you'll recall, there are intensity zones indicated on the Buford Highway corridor uh, character area, and that's, again, to help distinguish between this fairly large character area with some, some different areas. So we're looking at adding in those newly annexed areas on the next slide uh, as 
uh, fitting those in with those intensities. So we're talking about um, high intensity for the Children's Healthcare of Atlanta property and then a medium intensity for Executive Park. There were some other suggestions that have come up, but we just want to make sure um, to, to point those out to you. One um, was to remove the st a statement about, about the uh, impact of National Register properties. This is actually in the existing conditions appendix. Um, the statement says that the uh, National Register designation only recognizes the value of properties to a community but does not um, protect them. Um, it was suggested that this be taken out. We think it's important to leave it in because right now um, there's no protection of those properties. A that has to be done locally and the National Register doesn't do anything to that effect. It just recognizes it. Who was asking to take it out? Um, this the historic was Brookhaven, right. HVNA, the Historic Brookhaven Neighborhood Association, their attorney felt that it, I think it was a legal issue that, that was, uh, I, it, it was for a legal reason, I think. Okay. So I actually, you know, I, I think that, and I think some of the um, intent of what they wanted has been misinterpreted in these revisions. Okay. And so I, I, um, I, I, I'd like, to, I, I'm going to recommend that I have a sit down with, with, um, with our staff and maybe you and okay. just to make sure and actually invite someone from a store Brookhaven to make sure that we clearly convey their their concerns. Sure, we definitely want um, yeah. what the community's vision is to be yeah. captured in any yeah, I, revision. I, I think some of it, uh, in large part, you've gotten the, you've captured most all of it. Okay. Um, um, this may need some fine tuning. Okay. Uh, and, and that's a great example of why. You know, I don't know that their intent was to diminish the, the historic preservation. It's just there was a legal basis for, the, for not having that included, which I'm not sure of why. Okay. But we'll get that clarification. Okay. Um, and then here are just the next steps um, for actually approving amendments and making these amendments, of course, based on any clarifications or adjustments that are needed or that might arise from the public. Um, part of that was a, a steering committee meeting which has been um, requested by the Comprehensive Plan Steering Committee. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you all may have. This is an action item? Yes. What we're looking for is council to, to move forward to direct the um, initiating the work. So yeah. The yeah, we'll, the we'll, yeah, well, um, you know, from the email that you had sent, it looked like we've got a little bit of time before we present it. it's presented to Planning Commission. Yes. Right. So we will, can we have that meeting to make sure that we've accurately uh, uh, compiled the concerns yes. of the Historic Brookhaven and, Neighborhood and Association? And I think, um, you know, and I'd like to suggest taking it uh, a step further that that same group or whoever that representative is from the neighborhood should also attend the steering committee meeting yeah. And, yeah, sure. um, and share that information as well so there's a full <coughs> yeah, okay. understanding and, of, of And right now we're looking at the steering committee meeting. It's temporarily slated for February 2nd. Okay. Um, and then after that we would want to post the document to the web for 30 days mm -hmm. and then we'll, we'll send the ad to the paper to uh, legally advertise it. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Amanda. Thank you, All Amanda. Right. Number two. Oh, Mr. Mayor, could you ask for a motion? On what? To direct the work. Um, direct the work as we discussed? Yeah, I mean, is there a motion? Right. Yeah. I, I move that we move forward with the plan as discussed and proposed by the city staff. I second. Um, Regarding discussion, this comprehensive plan. Just make sure the caveat about the HBNA. With, yeah, I mean, the the recommendation has it to, to leave them in so we need to make sure that that's distinguished that we want to hold off on leaving those in or leaving them or taking them out before, until we've had such time to right well, well we're just authorizing them to move forward with staff we're, we're actually going to have to come back and vote on the right. on the final document so right. it it through this process will be subject to those changes. We I just want to make sure that what we just pr were presented, if the staff's going to be working on that, right. that, that section needs yeah. to be directed to, to make those right. changes and uh, according to Stuart Brookhaven. Right. All in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 
Aye. Aye. All Aye. opposed? All right. Okay, um, item number two uh, is going to be handled in two parts, but two separate ordinances. Ordinance 2014-11-19, that was the item ordinance that you moved from old, old business to new business. And then the original item number two <coughs> is uh, ordinance, uh, well, it's an ID number here, 1648, and that is to amend Chapter 15. Also, this is non-consensual uh, towing. And 2014-11-19 is uh, the Wreckers um, service, the new article. And Emily has that information to present. This is one of the last ordinances from DeKalb County that we're bringing over. If you mm -hmm. recall, we looked at a version of this two meetings ago, and this was all in one ordinance. And the council had a lot of comments on it. And so what I did is incorporated a lot of those comments, and I've actually split it into two different ordinances for us to consider separately. The first one would be ID 1648, which is adopting a new Article 8 to Chapter 15. One of the comments we had last time was that we didn't want to have a license for records, and we only wanted to have a license for records that were located within the city of Brookhaven. Well, anybody that has a business location in the city of Brookhaven is already going to have an occupational license. So what you have the option of doing, though, just for people who do what they call non-consensual towing or trespass towing, that's for anybody who comes in and does it against, without the owner's permission, if a private property owner contracts with them, the city of Brookhaven. Brookhaven actually has a contract with a t with a tow truck for this um, this service that you can require them to have an additional license. You're not required to do it, but it's just an option. And if you did require them to have a license, they'd have to come in. And this is only for people who are only going to do trespass towing. This isn't when there's a car accident. This isn't when you call and you, your car's broken down. Their, somebody would park their car in a spot that says right. no parking. And it, there's a lot of regulations, and there's a lot of state regulations and a lot of state law that they would still have to comply with. It's just they would also, if they were going to do it in Brookhaven, have to come in and get a license. And then the other portion of this ordinance about this license is that you would be able to charge the ma you would be able to regulate the maximum rate that they could charge for doing that. That being said, the state already does this. So it's not necessarily a, a must have. The state has concurrent, concurrent jurisdiction. It's the Georgia Department of Public Safety. Um, they make rates every year. But as a municipality, you have the option of adopting lower rates if you wanted to, lower than the state's rates for a tow in Brookhaven. This ordinance is drafted to adopt the Georgia Department of Public Safety rates right now for towing, um, non-consensual towing, and for storage rates. But it would be something that you could change on a year-to-year -year basis, or you could decide not to adopt this portion at all. So that's why we separated it. I'll go ahead and talk. So basically, if we did not adopt it, that we wouldn't have the right to come back and change the rates later on. You could come back later if you decided it, you didn't like the state's rates. But we'd have to adopt the ordinance right. first before doing that. And you're going to have to, you're technically supposed to adopt the rates every year if you're going to be lower. Now, Dunwoody and Sandy Springs have this ordinance. They've just adopted the state's rates. Very simple, one-liner. They have a preferred record. They only allow one record to come in and do it. Um, this wouldn't be limiting it to one record. City of Atlanta has quite an extensive records ordinance. that They've been sued multiple times. Uh, little pieces here and there have been <laughs> chipped on and off, including one by once by Mr. Mayor, and he's very familiar with it. They went all the way up to the Supreme Court of the United States. So, Did he win? Uh, he did win. Mm -hmm. Supreme Court. All right. U.S. Supreme Court? Mm -hmm. All the way to the top of it. There you go. And surprisingly, it has been litigated many, many times. Um, so this is preempted by federal law. There's very strict things that we can and can't do. The one thing we can do is license non-consensual towing and license the rates for it. But that's about it. And you said we don't need to do the rates. The state already does you it. You don't have to. The state does it. And so that's one of the reasons well I separated not do it. it. No, it, well, that's up to you whether you want to be lower than the rate or give your code enforcement the ability to issue citations we have a in addition to the state. We want to hear from if we, we can hear from Mr. Mayor. Right. Subject matter expert. Come on up. Yeah, we're going to ask some questions or some comments from me on this. Uh, I'm sorry, Mayor, but he's out of order. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, well, <laughs> what's new? Who knew you were breaking up monopolies <laughs> in Atlanta? We knew that. In our industry, if you want to call it, have a, a, a dark side, this is the impound business brings out the dark side. Uh, a case, in fact, my um, mother-in-law had her car impounded in the city of Marietta, but the record service hauled it the other side of Six Flags where the city of Marietta had no clout, no nothing, and they wanted to charge her like $500 because her wheels were turned and she had it in park and she backed it in and they wanted to, to, to get her. And when, when we sued the city, you know, their, their, their law is a great law. It's just that all that, you know, they said that a, a record was a record was a record, and it's not. If you have your uh, Brown and Brown has y'all's contract, they are, are, are permitted with DeKalb County, they're fingerprinted, everything. I don't know if, if y'all uh, have them, you know, if you're going to do an impound law here, you need to say is like it says here. If you keep them within a three or a five mile radius of their impound lot, that way, if you go to Kroger and they impound your car, you don't have to drive the Six Flags. And then when you get way out there, you know. And the only thing that I will differ with you is the state will not go over and slap somebody's hand. They don't really have anyone in their office to do oh, that. So you're saying we might need to adopt our own top end? Yeah, if you say, you know, you got to have your fingerprints because, like I say, the darker side of our industry comes out here. Say, for instance, you have your car and it's, uh, say, at one of the other grocery stores and you left your wallet and your pistol in over here. Next thing you know, your car has been impounded and you go over there. They won't let you in it. And your wallet's not there and your gun's gone. <coughs> well, if you've got all the fingerprints of all these drivers who impound, then you can call the police and say, come fingerprint this car here. You know, if you have no control over these guys, you know, like I say, every industry has a dark side, and I'm not saying it's all that way. Just, you know, it, it just keeps everybody in order. Well, thank you. If you take those comments over any, to account. Any other uh, comments? Do you look at both of these ordinances? I think we're doing one uh, at a time. I looked at it. The only thing that I saw is, is like, say, for instance, if I'm in my tow truck and I'm <laughs> I'm driving up Ashley Road, and there's an accident, and I stop. No PD there yet, no fire. I render aid. I block the lane. While I'm blocking the lane, I'm explaining to the people, exchange information before police officers get here. That way you'll have everything. Well, if the lady says then, hey, you want to tow my car to Curry Honda, I ought to have that right. This is, I mean, I don't think we'll have a problem, but it's, you know, it's sort of vague here that says that if I drive up on, on the scene, you know, that, you know, I mean, I know everybody, so I don't think I'm going to have a, a problem. There are the, what they call the gypsy records that just, like say, they drive around. Uh, we hadn't had a problem here. Uh, I don't see us having a problem. All right. So I don't think it's right. going to be that much of a, All right. an issue. This Thank is, you. you know, pretty much on the money. Appreciate it. All right. He says pretty much on the money. All right. Okay. As far as the fingerprinting, we're not specifically requiring it, but the finance department could make that a condition of okay. issuing the license. Um, the states, you still have to have a state license, so you're still going to have to come in. I do agree with Mr. Mayor. It will give you the opportunity to regulate the rates and also cite them in municipal court potentially. And it's just, just adopt the rates that the state already has. Yes, or, and, or lower them if you want, just so that you know there's rates, the towing and rate charges. Uh, do you, do you want to know what the states are real quick, or do you? How many are there? Well, depends on the size of the vehicle, and they, they go from 150 to 750. 750 is for vehicles of 20,000 pounds or greater. 
that gives you, but for most vehicles, it's going to be that, that would be to, your SUV. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> With, with, with me in it, yeah. There's four, <laughs> right. Four classes in the total removal fee. It goes 150, 250, 400, and 750, depending on the size of the vehicle. All right. What about the restriction on how far they can tow a car in order to There's, impound it? The federal law just says that we can regulate the price, but this is for the total price. Can that, be oh, done yeah. by the, can that be done by the finance committee when they do the fingerprint? The restriction of, yeah. of the total, I would think that that would be problematic because it's pretty specific. It says that we can only regulate. The only thing that's not preempted by federal law is the price of non-consensual towing. I thought we, we had it, a, it does provide. Miles. It does provide. It does provide for the opportunity to revoke a license if they mm -hmm. take it more than five miles. Right. Okay. Right. All right. That's what we'll do. All right. All right. Um, you want to do the second one or you want to do this one first? We can do the second one. The second one was the second half of Chapter 15. Mm. We've moved it to Chapter 17, mm. and it's going to be Article 5 because I wasn't sure if you were going to adopt the license requirement or not. Right. And so this is Chapter 17 is the motor vehicles and traffic title of our, of our ordinance. We took out a lot of the regulations, if you'll see, that were in it initially. All it says now is that every tow truck in the city of Brookhaven has to have lettering on the side of the car that is two and a half inches in height, and that's a state law. I think the next one is the one that, that Mr. Mayor was concerned about, the response to accident seen upon pro proper request only. It says that you, you can only come to a car accident scene if you're called by the police department or by one of the people in the accidents um, or an authorized representative. The next one, responsibility for cleaning up accident debris. If there's glass, then the, the responding wrecker has to clean it up. That's also state law. And then the last one is cruising or parking for the pur purpose of soliciting towing work. It just makes it illegal to drive around and look for cars to tow. I remember and I'd do that, would you? Uh, he's, he's out of order, Mr. <laughs> Mayor. If I can add one small thing. Come to the front. Uh, a few of the towing services that have the county contracts, if you have an accident, they just take a shovel and shovel the glass in the front seat, floorboard, the back seat of the cars. I think what we need to do is require, and it's not, it doesn't really take that much more, is to re require and they're going to hate me for saying this, but to require the towing service who tows for our city to, to get a, a, a garbage bag, you know, for, for each accident and then throw it in the car because, I mean, I've seen it. Matter of fact, I've got pictures of it on my phone, and that's, that's really happened in Brookhaven, and a woman out of rent goes, that glass wasn't even from my car, and they took a shovel of the glass mm -hmm. and, and put it in my car and just put it in there. And it, it doesn't take but two extra minutes to grab a garbage bag, whether you have to get somebody to hold you or whether you fix a little thing on the side of your tow truck with clothespins and say, or a garbage can, extra garbage can, because this is Brookhaven. There's nowhere else. This is Brookhaven. So if we require them to say in the wreck <laughs> that you have here, instead of taking a shovel, and throwing it in the front seat of your car, and, and, and I mean, and, and can we the, just say um, any any operator uh, in connection with that section uh, that the any debris cleaned up shall be placed in a container, i.e., a, a garbage a bag, bag, a bag or a container, and not thrown in with a shovel. I mean, because. Well, a you know, battered it's container so bad. Yeah. before it's plate before it's disposed of. Why not just dispose it in the tow truck? Yeah, <laughs> the uh, uh, can, you know, because I mean, if you thing. see it, if you see it one time, you go, yeah, "This stuff from my car," and they just dumped a whole shovel load, and there's antifreeze and oil dry, and they just throw it right in your car, and it's not just here; it's a few other places. And like I say, I live here. This is Brookhaven. This is a whole different ball game. You know, we just need to do it a little prettier and a little sharper than anybody else. They're not going to like me for saying that, but the, um, what we need to do. 
the oil freeze, the cat litter or whatever else they put on it to soak up the oil, they're supposed to dispose of that a certain way under the EP. Well, talking about, talking but about the, glass. the glass, we could just add a sentence. Glass and debris. Any yeah. glass debris shall be. And all dry. I mean, and all dry. Just add that in there because if you don't. Well, I'm, I'm nervous about the oil dry on the fly because I think there could be EPD regulations. But the. I've, I've represented a city who's been sued for it before. It's the only reason I'm just saying, just bring keep it, it up. Keep it what you're comfortable with just so we have something. Okay. I don't think they would put the stuff in a bag and then, then dump the other stuff in the car if not, you know, if they have a bag. That's good info from a yeah, subject thank, matter thank effort. Thank you. Uh, one, one thing, and in, in, uh, we'll, we'll give a carrot to, to the additional uh, recommendations that you've made, Ronnie, and that I remember from our earlier discussions, uh, the police, our, uh, our chief saying that, that the weekly reports weren't really necessary. Um, is that still the case? That, that, you know, there's a requirement in this ordinance for weekly reports. To we, we took that one out. Okay. We took out the weekly. That was in the first version. Okay. That was one of the things we did take out. However, if they um, do any non-consensual towing, they are going to be required to do, um, to do the reports, but that's under state law. They just have to notify huh. the police department with a certain amount of days so the police can make sure it's not a stolen car and then find the proper mm -hmm. owner. So I've got... I mean, I printed this one off the agenda tonight. That the uh, if you're reading the non-consensual portion, no, no, I'm I'm in weekly reports. It's the uh, this is amending records in in, in its entirety. The one you're moving to chapter 17, article five, right? Yeah, I've got 17301 definitions. Well, maybe it's just you had an older version posted on the agenda, but but it said. 15506 weekly report, so I guess that's been removed out of the final. That's from the, the that's previous, the old, the old one. All right, mm -hmm. well, good. I just quickly have that in DeKalb County is because the record companies have to give a case back to the county for what the <coughs> one they charge the county wants to know how many, they, how many cars are towed. All right. Really? Call. <laughs> All right. Our contract with our tower does require reports, but that's just for city initiated All right. contract. All right. Is there a motion? You got it. <laughs> well, now I'm not sure that I know the right say adopt the ordinances as, as, yeah. as amended. If I so could, can I do both yeah. of them? You could do both. Or do one at a time probably would be easier, but just make sure if you're the chapter 15, article 8 is ID 1648. That's the chapter 15. That's the That's one about the, the license. Non consensual? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I move that we approve ordinance ID. 1648, it's the ordinance to amend. This is still Chapter 15, right? Mm-hmm. Is there an <coughs> article on this one? Eight. Article 8. It's a new Article 8. New, new Article 8, adopting uh, non-consensual towing in its entirety as stated by the city attorney. Is there a second? Did we have an amendment in this discussion? It's to the we second do, one. The we'll second do, one. Oh, okay. We'll do, we'll is there a second? We'll no, do. I'm just doing the first one. Is there a, a second? second? Any discussion? All in favor of adopting the motion to state it signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? Aye. All right. I move that we adopt ordinance. Do you have an ID number on this one? or? It's ID 1594. Ordinance ID 1594, which is an ordinance to amend Chapter 17, Article 5, records in its entirety, which as stated by the city attorney as an amended um, in our discussion, <coughs> or do I need to be more d definite? Uh, uh, for, if you want to amend to add that debris, then we to, need to specifically state the amendment. The, the amendment to this is to um, section seventeen three oh six. Add requirement that disposal of debris is in, is done in a manner discussed. Properly contained in a sealed container, or properly removed in a sealed container. We'll just direct. Can I give? You, yeah. Can I give you direction to make sure that the intent of that? Is you have to have the exact language. Well, give it to us. Any debris removed shall be properly contained in a sealed container. I would add that to the last sentence. Container or 
bag. Or bag. There, that's it. So, so any debris removed shall be properly contained in a sealed container or bag at the end of section 17306. I, I agree with the uh, <laughs> amendment as stated by the city attorney. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor of adoption of the motion signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Or, yeah, All right. Okay. Um, the next two items are related, so I think they can be discussed together, but motions will be made separately. Uh -huh. uh, ordinance ID 1646 and ID 1650 have to um, uh, do with granite curbing. All right. Uh, and Emily has that. Okay, this is also as a result of our last session um, when we adopted the streets regulations as part of the subdivision regulations, and there was concern about the granite curbing. And so this is an amendment. The first is an amendment to your streets and sidewalk section ordinance. It's adding a new section 238 and a new section 2389, and this is designed only to regulate existing granite curbing on streets. What it does is says that any person has to get, in addition to any permit, that they're going to have to come in and get permission from the city before they remove or replace any granite curbing or before they do like landscaping that might displace the curb. It's also making it clear that the granite curbing in the public street right away is the property of the city of Brookhaven. If you remove it, you can't sell it. You do have to return it to the city unless they give you approval to do otherwise. And then it also adds <coughs> number C, a, a um, penalty provision of if you, if you do do this, it's a penalty up to $500 per lineal foot of granite curb that is removed. And basically the only purpose of having this ordinance is to try to give the city and the code enforcement some, some teeth to if the curbing is removed and what they can do to, to kind of recompensate that and come back and get it. The city already does in section 2387 have a permit that it's called an encroachment permit. Anytime you do any kind of construction where you're moving a driveway or moving curbing, since that's connected to the city public streets, since it's can say on the city public right away, you have to come in and get a permit. But I think not everybody knows that. And so this is just to make sure when we have the granite curbs that you can clearly point to, to regulation for the granite curbs. And right. you'll see that's the second ordinance. It, that's relating to that permit that I just said. If you don't get a permit, then the city could come in and fine you for that, too. Okay. All right. Is there a motion? So we're looking at uh, Ordinance 1646 and 1650. Is that yes. correct? Emily? ID numbers, yes. Okay. I'll move that uh, we approve Ordinance ID number 1646, consideration and approval of an ordinance to amend Chapter 23, Streets and Sidewalks, by adopting a new Section 23-8 granted curb and a new Section 23-89 Failure to obtain permit. Second. Uh, have any public comment? I don't know. Uh, is there any public comment? None on this one. Okay. On the next one. All right. Um, Did we pass these together or separately? Separately. Separately. Okay. All right. No public comment. So there's a second on this? Yes. Discussion? Uh, one question. Um, since this is such a severe penalty, 500 bucks, mm -hmm. um, is, are there any measures taken by the city to help communicate this to the marketplace as far as... It's, you know. it's up to $500, right. and that's upon conviction in municipal court. And right. so the judge is going to have the discretion to set what fine he or she thinks is appropriate. Still, the Builder good. Summit and other, we need to communicate this. Right. And just, I, I think, I maybe think, a press release would even be good about it. Yeah. My understanding is the intention is really to make sure that the, sand, the granite, if it is disturbed, is reset. And that if there, it is stolen, because I guess stolen might be a, a, a strong word, but that has been happening, that it's been removed, gone replaced, missing. Gone, missing. gone missing, replaced with curbing, and then the city doesn't have the resources. And Richard, we have it. an inventory of the granite curbs in Brookhaven, um, correct? We have an inventory of the curbs. I don't know that we know exactly where all the inventory is, but we look at, you know, when we have a building permit come in or a permit come in, we go out and look at it and make sure, confirm whether it's granted or non-granted. Richard, I asked you, uh, I guess it was a couple months ago, about the paving on Windsor Parkway mm -hmm. with the granite curbing now street level. It's down. Um, did we have some sort of requirement they lift it up and backfill it? No, we actually didn't. On When we did that, and what the comment that was occurred, and I checked back with my staff, we had not gone through 
we had just literally done the paving that day, uh -huh. and part of the cleanup is to go clean the excess out of the gutter, and we hadn't, they hadn't completed that part of the paving, and that since has been completed. But we're not so, going to pick up the, we're not going to pick up the curb. We weren't going to pick up the curb, but what we did is we milled down so what was put back matched what was there before. Well, what would it, it cost to raise that up? Um, I think we're running... About um, when we're spot doing it, it's costing about $30 a linear foot to raise it. But um, we haven't really gotten prices if we did a whole road. We should actually be able to get a little bit better price than that. But it's, it runs around $30 a foot. I think it's about $30 a foot. Get to pricing raise it. for that? Maybe we can do a I mean, we, discretionary. We, we do discretionary already. I mean, we that's one of the standard work orders that we do. We already do. We probably do. Um, about two or three curb adjustment work orders a week um, where we have issues and it's discretionary with oh, our maintenance It looks crews. really weird on Windsor Parkway. To, it's you got this granite. You can just see the top of it. Yeah. Uh, but but like I said, when we did this, because we milled edge mill. I know. I, know. It, I just it, wanted you to ask to, if we could look at that section we of Windsor can. Parkway and just see what the price would be. to. Yeah, we will. Uh, and in the future with paving, one of the things we need to do, we didn't do it this time because of trying to get everything done. But one of the things we are going to have to incorporate into our paving plan each year is add money in for potential curb adjustments as part of that and make an evaluation of it. It would seem it would be cheaper once they mill it down. Then you've got some two or three inches where now it's exposed, it'd be easier to grab and pick yeah. up. So, yeah. you know, rather than leaving it where it was previously, if you know when the street's going to be put back that it's going to be street level, go ahead and pick it up yeah. before they put the pavement down. It, right. Yeah. All right. Okay, Marie. I'm, I've just heard that. <laughs> That's I'm, directed to you. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. In All fact, right. I was going to say that you know we'll um, upon the adoption of, of the second ordinance, both ordinances will get out um, and be blast, and we can do it through social media. We'll also have it on our website, and then um, we can do a press release. But it can be brought up at the next builders summit. All right, um, well. and this is a you know an issue I've always been concerned. I, even when I was a teenager, I remember thinking that the granite carbon looks so nice and, you know, always wanting to make sure we get it back. And then since I've been mayor, I've noticed it. But then Ronnie Mayor a couple months ago, probably three months ago, called me and said, hey, there's a spot on Windsor Parkway. And, and you drive by something every day, you just don't, you kind of just don't notice it. And they, they had taken that one little section, it was about 10 feet, where there used to be granite curb, and now it's just concrete. It looks horrible. And now I saw today, there's a, there's a slab of granite laying next to it now. It was about five feet long, but I don't know what's going on there, but that was interesting to me. Well, I've got extra granite. I've got extra granite. If you go to the builder and ask him to do it, he pull it out and change it. It just looks bad. I just wanted to, you know, this has been an issue I've been concerned about, but I wanted to thank you for pointing it out, and then I want to thank Terrell for actually coming to the podium and kick-starting it a little bit. So we appreciate our informed citizens in, doing the, in helping us, you know, move these things along. So. Thank you. All right. Yes, Is there any more discussion? All in favor of the motion, signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right, the next one. Um, I'd like to recommend we approve ordinance number ID 1650, consideration and approval of ordinance to amend chapter 14, sec section 14 376. Standards granite curbing. We have to we, we 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 have to have our public comment on this one. Yes, uh -huh. and and I'll go over it really briefly. This is already part of our ordinance. This is part of the subdivision ordinance. Mm -hmm. <coughs> subsection A was actually part of subsection B, and it said it only applies to subdivisions. And mm -hmm. so what we did was expand it to make it clear that these curb standards apply throughout the city of Brookhaven. That's where they already exist. We're That's, not requiring them. This is new yeah. new development and. The old the, the ordinance we just passed references these standards, so right. we want to make it clear that it applies not just to platted subdivisions but to commercial property. Um, the right. only part that's really an issue is A, and then D is the curbing standards. That's how DeKalb County had it. They mandated either granite curbing or whatever is approved by the Public Works Department because sometimes there's going to be circumstances where concrete might be more appropriate or maybe no curb at all. And I think Richard has some comments about that. I'm, well, a, I'm in favor of letting the public work. I mean, you know we want granite right. curbing, but where it's not practical, of course you have discretion. I would think it, you would have discretion. Right, and this is really with, um, because this covers both existing roadways and new roadways, if we mandated, we don't want to mandate granite curb right. for a new street. Right. Um, so that 
gives the discretion at my discretion or public works director's discretion. Okay. All right. And Thank they're going to use standards that they apply to make that decision. All right. Thank you. Uh, public comment? Terrell Carstens. Oh. I can click. Um, Terrell Carstens, 2444 East Nala Drive, speaking as a private citizen only. Um, the whole purpose here, uh, in my opinion, is the emphasis on the preservation and the restoration of it. Um, so it's not, I think that y'all have done a great job going with what we've got, implementing it, being realistic and being logical and fair to everybody. Um, one question I had was possibly to help Ben is that when they come in for their permit, if they identify on the um, permit request, if they do have any granted on their, on their site or on their property, so that we're not hawking it all the time and looking for it. If they just identify it on their, per on their permit request, we'll know and we cross-reference it with Richard's report on where there is granite curbing in the street. Do you have a comment about that, Richard? Yeah, um, we already do requirement, require that in our site reviews. Okay. Fabulous. Do you get, do you get accurate compliance? Um, for the most part, yeah, we've had, a, we've had a few developers push back on it, but for the most part, um, most of the developers we've had, builders we've had, have been more than happy to comply with the requirement. And then lastly, on Conasaga, where you just finished paving a month or so ago, there's a strip there now, too, where it's not as if it was removed. It's just once it was uh, discovered that there were curbs there because there was so much <laughs> debris out into the street, there is a section missing there, too. So if that could be replaced, that would be excellent. I think it's probably five, six feet of curbing. But it's a obvious. obvious. Yeah. Thank you. Richard, do you have a comment about that? Okay. Okay. All right. That's that piece that's laying any, on the street over there. Yeah. Uh, any more public any more comment, Kathy? No, no. All right. Um, is there a motion? Yes, I thought I made the motion already. We got to oh, say. We had to, we had to do public comment. Yeah. No, 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 I'll, re I'll repeat the motion. Right. Just, just reference the ID number, please. Uh, or I approve. I recommend that we approve ordinance ID number sixteen fifty. Thank you. Is there a second? I'll second. second. All right. Any discussion? All in favor of the approval? Signify by saying aye. 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 All opposed. All right. Okay, uh, next item is consideration and approval of legal services engagement letter uh, for our city attorney and his firm, uh, Tom Curry and Coleman Talley. Uh, you did receive that attachment in your packet. Uh, I will just make mention so that there is um, a, a full understanding and clear understanding that the retainer uh, remains the same. Uh, however, the hourly rate has increased from 150 an hour to 165. Uh, also, um, on the uh, representation and any consulting that we need out of Tom's firm that would include personnel, employment law, uh, we have been working with uh, Lisa Wanamaker and his firm, and her rate is at $200 an hour. Uh, also included in this is um, regular office hours here at City Hall. Uh, which is always helpful, and we always look forward to Tom coming in. Thank you. <laughs> and um, it's really on who grabs him first, yeah. where he stays the most. But uh, also, um, the retainer, while it covers much of what you are already accustomed to, phone calls, review of contracts, interpretation of, of certain legal matters, um, any matter that will take more than an hour that's part of the retainer uh, will be billed out separately. Just the contracts? For contracts. Just contracts only, not meetings or anything like that? Correct. Okay, just for contracts? Just for contracts. Okay, all right. Yeah. Anything else, Marie? No. All right. Any just questions? Um, was there separate billing for contracts in the last agreement? In the last agreement, no contracts were included in the, um, were, in, were included in the retainer. So this is something new? Uh, if it's more than an hour, yes. Okay. But I think probably the bulk of what we, we have done, um, we worked with. Now, we did, we were able to build on real estate matters such as the leases of City Hall and those types of things. Um, That's a separate building. The, um, okay. And I kept track on the retainer, which I do as far as the, the hours, and I was just looking through December is that the actual fees at $150 an hour for everything that was spent on retainer services um, was 
$62,000. We were $62,000 in the hole for that, you know, for the year. Now, I'll also say that I have um, uh, enabled Emily and Laura to, um, to participate and participate in the meetings and things like that. Um, and that's really it. That's really it. My my direction, just for the purpose of making sure that there's always somebody behind me that can can step in the chair if I'm not here. <clears throat> All right. I just want to be sure that's contracts and intergovernmental agreements. Anything more than an hour. All right. So if it's less than an hour, there's right. it's part that's of the retainer. All, right. yeah. All right. Any more questions? Thank you for the work you do, and uh, you know we'll, we'll just probably, I know you got a little a small increase here. We'll just make sure that we're also all of us more conscious of when we when we <coughs> ask and utilize the city attorney. We need to make sure we walk mind our p's and q's, and we're spending money when we do that. So, well, as you, as you know, the retainer you can call me anytime, uh, twenty four seven, and I think you all can attest of my mm -hmm. my availability, and sure. it will continue that way. Right. Uh, and that's all part of the retainer. Right, and, uh, and I just want to make sure yeah. we understand we have a duty to. Make sure we don't overdo it, too. All right. Thank you. Any more questions? Is there a motion? I'd like to make a motion that we approve the legal services engagement letter for Thomas Curry, Jr., or Coleman Talley, attorneys. Seconded. Any discussion? Yeah, I'd just like to also thank, thank Tom and all the staff at Coleman Talley for the uh, very thoughtful, diligent work that you all have done for the city. It's been uh, a great uh, benefit, I think, to the citizens of Brookhaven, and then I'm sorry that you have have uh, had to work as many hours as you ha as you have, but uh, as you have done. But mm -hmm. but it has been great counsel to the city of Brookhaven and to our well, citizens. Well, it's it's certainly an honor to have had the privilege in order to do this, and while it may be excessive, the entertainment value is very great. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Tom, you just stole what I was going to thank you for. <laughs> uh, thank you. I, I want to say personally, thank you. And uh, you've, you've handled a diverse number of issues uh, with a diverse number of personalities. And uh, you did it masterfully. And I, I'm very thankful for your service to the city. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. All in favor of the motion, signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. OK, the last item. Um, is ordinance 2015-01-01 and if you'll recall during our budget hearing but you missed number six municipal elections. Oh, excuse me i'm sorry i'm jumping ahead go ahead uh, resolution to fix and publish uh, the qualifying fees for uh, the municipal election coming up later this year all right susan you handled this all right thank you is state law that you have to um, agree what the qualifying fee is mm -hmm. by February the 2nd. Every city in Georgia is doing that. Right. And um, the mayor was 480 and the council's 360. And we have council member Rebecca Chase Williams, um, District 1, the mayor running, and Bates Madison, District 3, will be up. Right. And I have to put it in the newspaper, so it'll be in the champion next right. week. Is there a motion? I move that we approve the resolution to fix and publish the qualifying fees for the general municipal election for 2015. Is there a second? I'll second. Any discussion? All in favor of the resolution signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Number seven. Okay. Now to ordinance 2015-01-01. Um, this is our TAN. I talked with you about that during our budget hearing uh, hearings in December. And um, Ed Wall has been assisting me. We did go out for a bid with the local banks. And I'm very pleased to tell you that uh, we did, uh, we were able to shop the rates and we're looking at a quarter of 1% um, finance fee for uh, $5 million, which will be treated as a line of credit. So we won't be taking the entire amount down. Mr. Wall is here and he can um, give you a little bit more information. We do have an ordinance. If you will approve this, uh, then we can move forward to schedule a closing. Quickly. Hey, Mayor, how you doing? Right. Yes, sir. Right. Um, do it next week, next Tuesday, I'm thinking. I'm and, talking about um, tonight. Sir? I'm talking about tonight. <laughs> do, do well, uh, I don't know if we can do it tonight, <laughs> Mayor. We have I mean, your money. presentation. <laughs> oh, make it short. Oh, yeah. 
<laughs> so each each of you have a sheet of paper. It shows you the computation of the bids. You saw how all it is. Um, it's great. I'm really proud of the interest rate, 0.75 percent. It's the lowest rate I've gotten so far for any TANS that I've done so far this year. Um, interest rates are higher this year than they were last year. Yet this year you got a rate of 0.75. Last year was 0.9. So you're wow. doing great. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All Thanks right. for sticking around and being the last participant. Yeah. We appreciate it. Hey, thank you all very much. You've been waiting um, since the work session. <laughs> Georgia Commerce, Commerce Bank. Bank. They bought Brookhaven, Brookhaven Bank, Bank in 2013. Okay. Good. Love a local bank. Yes, yeah, so really. it's a local bank. They wanted and your business bad. My Good. my ballpark estimation looks like you've saved us ten grand just on this rebidding and yes, from sir. last year's. Uh, so that's great. That's good. Total interest we're paying it, it on the five million looks like at thirty two thousand or something for that's the right, year. Sir. And it'll be less than that because we did it as a line of credit. Right. So you only pull it down as you need it. And that's excellent. You probably won't need all five million, but we put it there in case you needed it. All right. Georgia law allow you to borrow up to seven. You only borrow in five. Well, I hope Thank residents you. of Brookhaven hear how well they've treated us and uh, take their business to them. All right. Georgia you. Commerce Bank, that's right. And I, I would like to thank them because yeah. I think they, they have, they've done good a, partner. Uh, a good job of giving us a, a kind of a sweetheart rate right. uh, mm -hmm. for being a local, local bank. Let's keep, our, let's keep our money in Brookhaven. Yeah. All right. You'd like well, me to read the ordinance? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is their third tan. We know what it is, and I was just we've got a copy of it here. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Thank you all very much. Thank, right. you. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Is there a motion? I move that we oh, approve. Hold on, hold, oh. hold, 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 hold. You need a public hearing. Public, public hearing. Public comment. No comments. All right. I move that we approve Ordinance 2015-01-01. And I second. All right. So our first one. Uh -huh. Consideration approval uh -huh. of ordinance for providing uh -huh. a temporary uh -huh. loan. You got the ordinance number right. You got it. All right. And I second. All right. Is there a second? I did. All right. Any discussion? Free money. All right. All right. All right. All in favor of the ordinance signify so by saying aye. 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 All opposed? All right. Next one, other business. Do we have other business, Marie? No. Public comments? Ronnie Mayer. All right. You have exhausted your commenting here, Ronnie. This, will, this is what I like to see us doing business with folks that live in Brookhaven. Ed lives in Brookhaven mm -hmm. and, he, and, and he spends his tax dollars here and that's how we should really do this on a, a lot of our contracts if we can. It's like because towing. I, I stayed out of it a little last year. Maybe next year, probably, year after next. Hey, hey, I'll, Ronnie, I'll stayed out of it. Ronnie, we have a policy that if you're a resident of Brookhaven and you quote on a bid, you get a 5% advantage. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you think I'm kidding? That's yeah. the truth. The, the reason the I'm truth. up here now, and I'm not, I'm not trying to throw the chief under the bus, is we hear that there, we've lost a lot of officers. Have we or no? Or? The word's out on the street that we've lost a lot of officers, that, and I didn't know when y'all were giving the pay raises if that was a reason we've lost any. Or, or and I'm not trying. Are, are you done with your comment? You done you with your comment? Comment, comment, yeah. please. If you're done, if you're done with the comment, then maybe the, we can talk to the chief about that. But we can't. You can't just engage. Uh, I, I I just hear rumors in the street that we have lost a lot of the great officers. I know we lost our assistant chief because he's running for for sheriff in Forsyth. And I haven't heard an announcement from y'all that he's not coming back. I think you need to tell the residents that, and and we loved him. And I think you need to tell the residents that he's not here. He's not coming back. I'd help you if I can. And uh, it's just, just a, you know, you know like I say, one, one, one more time, I want to plant the trees on Peach Tree. Uh -huh. We have an excess of trees, of, of uh, free trees. If you'll go look at a couple places under the bridge at Peachtree and Dresden, you'll see I used a couple extra pieces of granite curbing for a little bench. Uh, when you do the, the 5K, there's a little benches down there, and that granite came from the city of Atlanta. I have a <laughs> I have a stockpile of it. If you ever need it, Ronnie, you're on tape yeah. for saying Thank that. You. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Ronnie. And where that comes from is the old house's driveways were six foot wide and now they're doing driveways 18 foot wide so there's extra pieces okay, that sure. lay around and so just for your knowledge right. that's where 
you know, when Thank you get you. extra stuff like that. Appreciate and y'all doing a good job, and I appreciate it. Appreciate Thanks. it. Um, Chief, did you have any uh, – the, the source for Ronnie's um, story, comment, was the street about the – the, the rumors that we're losing lots and lots of officers came from the street as a source. What is the... Yes, Mayor. As, as with every startup city, we checked around with other cities, too. When we hired the people, we, we gave them the expectations. We did lose 11 officers since we started. We're up to full strength almost already. Um, five, five of the officers were either... We've got high standards, so five of them were either terminated or resigned in lieu of termination. Um, four so of them left for... For personal reasons, either more money in the private sector, they got tired of driving, mm -hmm. they had kids and their family grew, and then the other ones... Um, two, remaining two. Yeah, we're, we're kind of on their way out anyway. All right, all right. gotcha. So it's not, it's not an abnormal... No, it, it's quite common because with, with the startup of New City, there's a lot of expectations. New officers leave other departments, mm -hmm. and that's what we had to start with. Uh, with the expectations of maybe promotions very quickly and we aren't that big of a department so there's not that much opportunity for promotions or or moving to other department you know divisions and things like that okay all right well thank you um and have, so we're have we hired back some of those different i mean hired replace those numbers that have that have left we're, we're actually up to the full strength already the three i think we're filling the last three this week okay good all right all right, let me see. And a public comment. Any more public comment? Catherine Bernard. Okay. As someone who has, before I got into criminal defense, I did do local government and administrative law, and we are paying far too much for lawyers in Brookhaven, and we have been for two years. And the, the letter that was just approved, unfortunately, sets up some pretty bad incentives. And in here, we've got litigation as hourly rates. We need to be discouraging litigation. Instead, we're in a situation where developers can come in and threaten litigation if they don't get the, if they don't get the deferral that they want, and that litigation there's no negative impact for really anybody but the taxpayers, unfortunately. So I think that would be something that y'all should consider moving towards something that is considered within a retainer agreement rather than creating sort of endless, uh, endless opportunities for outside attorneys who are being supervised as well as our attorneys to work on litigation of all sorts. So also the real estate acquisition, the title research. Title research is, again, something that should be fairly standard in one of these agreements. It's not something that should be uh, we should charge extra for. And I do appreciate Councilwoman Williams pointing out that there is a change with the addition of contracts over one hour requiring uh, special billing rates. Maybe we have too many major contracts and intergovernmental agreements if we're, if we're finding ourselves taking a lot of time on them. I think ultimately we, we spent, I believe it was $400,000 in the first year of Brookhaven on, on litigation. I don't know the exact figure for the past year, but we're shaping up to continue spending a lot more. And I, this is not the fault of the city council. This is not something that's unique to Brookhaven. It's happening all over Georgia and, and really all over the country. But we have got to, to keep these litigation costs in line. And I think that is going to require uh, some aggressive leadership from the city council on this. Uh, I understand, you know, our, our city attorney is a very nice man and, and the assistance he has. They're all very nice people, too. Uh, I, I was a very nice person when I was uh, a useless associate billing a tremendous rate on all these all these uh, affairs. But unfortunately, it's not good for the taxpayers of Brookhaven. We're spending too much, and I ask that y'all take a little bit of a harder look at those incentives and where the money is going. So, thank you. You're still a nice person. <laughs> <laughs> I do my best. I, I, it's, it's our industry. It's, it's, it's not any individual problem. Our industry is, is Thank you. I just want to reiterate that we need to all watch our P's and Q's and the amount we, we contact and utilize the city attorneys. That's some, that still stands. Um, so I think we're all in agreement with that. Oh, absolutely. I, I just wish uh, somebody could come up with a way to discourage people from suing cities <laughs> yeah. and filing su lawsuits. Uh, Sounds like legislation. I mean, I know you got, yeah. we got uh, I, I wish we had more control over that because yeah. we do spend, I, I'm, I don't like the amount of money that we spend on litigation, but um, more often than not, 95% of the time, we have no control over right. it. I think, we, I think we've done an exceptional, I, se exceptional job in reclaiming uh, legal fees from mm -hmm. those that have sued us. Yeah, I, I actually think that that number sounds way out of whack. I, I mean, based on the based on the recouping of legal fees and on litigation matters, 
uh, and our Germa insurance on some other. Um, I mean, do you have a ballpark on what we've spent on the litigation? Well, I'd, I'd have to I'd have to look at outside counsel, uh, uh, and and probably and and do that. I would. Um, yeah. I mean, you have you have all my invoices, yeah. and you have it yeah. you have it by by category. I mean, so, in the budget, we looked yeah. at it. So we, yeah, we very we were reimbursed two hundred eighty something eight thousand dollars from mm -hmm. from uh, the Pink Pony litigation, so that was essentially zero cost. Yeah, a lot of time on our end. A lot of time. Yeah, a, a lot of time. Of, but zero cost. A lot of entertainment value. <laughs> right. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Let me see. Pub <laughs> no more. Is there any more public comment? Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, mayor's comments. Uh, no, I don't have any comments. I don't believe. Um, nope. Executive session. Yes, we do need executive session. I think for uh, personnel and litigation. Right. That's uh, correct. Is there a, is there a motion? Just to explain, you want to explain to the audience. We're going to be after executive session. We're going to come back in and adjourn. We're going to come back out and adjourn. We're not going to conduct any more business once we come back from executive session. Hey, <laughs> gotta have the gavel. Is there any? Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor of the executive mm -hmm. session signify so by saying aye. Aye. All opposed? I don't know if I heard an aye from you two. I don't know if that's a quorum. Aye. All right. All opposed? All right, we're in executive session.